What? Welcome to Blood Chat! Oh my god! Ladies and gentlemen, it's episode... 37. I actually, Thanks, I Kurt. think it's incredible that since we've gone to remote broadcasts, the hosting quality has just gone through the fucking floor. No, 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 no. <laughs> But the views I, have been going up, though, so everybody keep watching. I think people... Watch, watch again. I think people would be would be quite pleased with my hosting. If I was if I was to host something important, like, can, yeah. would you guys watch if I was a stage host? Write in the comments. Like for the esports awards. If I was a stage host of the Owl Finals, would you watch? Would you like that? <laughs> Have the crowd and be like, "Who the fuck is that?" <laughs> <laughs> but that, that? That happens too many times, though. Like, how many times when you were younger did you tune into shows and they had like some new generation young comedian on with like no stage experience? And I feel like Brent uh, would no, really, no. you know, do that. You know, he'd walk up on esports awards, and I don't know, you'd have like Adam Apicella and be like, "Who the hell is this Brent guy?" And it'd just be like, like <laughs> "Well, a- I, I think the esports awards, like, they're trying to like have credibility, and then like the Bro. people saw Brent just roll out there, and like, I don't know, you would wear something dumb, no, like, the, like this a, is the same esports awards that makes me a, a mix video suit. wise. Okay. <laughs> like they, no, that was uh, that was a different one, wasn't it? No, it's the same esports uh, awards. Anyway, what what do we do? What is this episode, guys? Oh, I remember now. It's the award show. Da da da. Pretty sick. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, not only that, but we teased something. Uh, we threw it out there, and the people they lapped it up like little kittens trying to suckle for milk. <laughs> is it really teasing if we tweet a fucking picture of who was on? We're just telling them at that, but we didn't tease anything. They already fucking know. I said it was special, and it is special. It is special. I think. Yeah. I, I think you know, we need to set the expectations straight. And the fact of the matter is, we're not fucking investigative journalists over here. We just I mean, want to arrange something more fun. What, <laughs> what are you talking what about? What are you talking Ooh. about? I we just wanted thing. to organize a fun thing and was like, hey, this is a cool initiative, a cool fun thing. We'll bring John on, we'll chat for a bit, you know. Oh, are people expecting us to like dig out the dirt? Yeah. Dig out the details? You know, I don't know. They're just rabid. And I'm like, yo, which is just a fun <laughs> thing, you know? Are people, actually rabid? Chat. Are people actually angry about it? Okay. Hello. Actually, you could twist it. They just wanted our, you know, raw opinions, which means that we got praise because apparently we have good opinions on something. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what you've been looking at, honestly, Jonathan. I don't know what opinion dude, you yo, see Johnny online. has such a... He is a drinking problem, dude. He's probably, like, hallucinating seeing this shit online. <laughs> that Bro. is the largest wine glass I've ever seen, though. That's yeah. huge. That could fit an entire bottle of wine in it. Okay, Johnny's so got here's... big hands as well. Yeah, he's a big boy. Oh, bro, yeah. John, you, you know what to say about big hands. I've seen his yeah. penis. <laughs> <laughs> well. Anyway, here's John Spector. Anyway, Spectre. here's the interview with John Spector. <laughs> Thank you, Bren. And yes, we have got the magnificent, the wonderful John Spector joining us live in our high quality studio. If you're wondering how I've teleported to my bedroom and why my dressing gown's on the bed, don't worry about it. Don't ask questions about that. But it's not going to. We're live. Yeah. yeah we're well, live right we're now. Live we? during no, we are. Chat. Don't yeah. believe him. People in the YouTube chat, don't believe him. <laughs> anyway, we are going to be talking about Hero Pools, the tournament stuff that's going on. I'll be honest, haven't really read the email that thoroughly, but, uh, but that's why John's <laughs> oh here. <my> <laughs> that's why John's here to tell <laughs> us all the, the bits and bobs, I suppose. John, so... now, now you know what we deal with. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... People people want to be included in these decisions, but they maybe to read their emails too. You can, you can also tell which one of us is like responsible as John has like a nice clean background. You can see the trees in the window. Like I have my Overwatch League background in the middle of the room. Bren's mm. got crap on the bed. Johnny's got a, a, a pel- is that one of those it's fancy Peloton, yeah. tread, treadmill things? Yeah. 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 I've and got a I think about three more months when I can use this as my office and then uh, the baby will take it over instead and I'll also mm. be filming from my bedroom. Mm. And, uh, that'll and he'll be... be one of us. He'll, he'll be one of us. Yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll or, or like Johnny. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the weird workout area where you can watch someone working out. It's really convenient. Room. Like I could go lift weights right now and it'd be, you know, efficient. Uh, what is the couch for? After Sibian? he's not lifting, so he can rest. <laughs> okay. Yeah, obviously. Just, like, the rest. It's, it's, it's a nice place color. where, yeah, it's it's place nice where you might just be watching people work out. How, how has it been, uh, John, working remote for you uh, through all of this? 
it's uh i think probably about as weird as as for the rest of us although i'm i don't have to go on the show from from my bedroom every weekend so it's been um uh, yeah it's it's been weird and and challenging i think in in a lot of those ways but like we also we we've always had staff all over the world and team players all over the world and so a, a lot of it is is kind of unchanged and we were like built for it in a way in a weird way <laughs> Want to work to work remotely? Yeah, we can all just sit in our, you know, respective I mean, I'm, rooms and I'm, just play video games, and then you know, send some emails and jump I'm on ready Zoom to get calls. back into a studio. I think. Yeah, um, this this whole idea that people can play video games online and that that's like it's we we spent the last however many years like trying really hard to always play video games in person on LAN and and forgot that the couple decades <laughs> that, it's, it's not how it worked. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, let's dive straight into the actual details then for the summer showdown because I believe that's what it's called, right? The summer showdown. Yes. Yep. We we put our brightest minds together to think of that one. It's uh, we got uh, uh, a lot of other suggestions that had like fun puns with June or or things like that, but the the tournament weekend itself is in July, so none none of those actually. Yeah, work. it's a little bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't we June. call it the May melee of June, but just call it like the May, like the hero, and really confuse people? And yeah, I wouldn't be confusing at all. Nah. The, the alliteration is is nice though. We're we're working on names for the third tournament too. If people have suggestions for that, but it has to be two words that start with the same letter. Uh, well, Do you, you have a, spe a specific date? Is that August? Is that going to be the August month so people can start making up stuff for August or? Yeah, it should be because we're taking the next tournament finishes that July fourth weekend. We'll take a week off and then come back for another month. So it's sort of that late july early august period all right so viewers august it is start making oh. the puns well, i was gonna say i mean you could you could look through our comments john to see if you get any names but there's nothing ever good in our comments so i mean they probably okay. won't come up with anything i'll uh i'll find some poor person on our marketing mm -hmm. team and tell them <laughs> their, their, their job today is to go <laughs> go your your <laughs> i'm like oh my god oh. these are horrible people <laughs> what, what what made the uh, what made the decision, or what 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 made you come to the conclusion? I guess that we should be running these tournament systems then throughout for the rest of the year. Or was it just the fact that the May melee was so successful from uh, almost every single viewpoint that we were just like, okay, we got to run, we we have to run two tournaments now, you know? I mean, we we thought like back in April, I want to say before the May melee was announced, like this this was the plan that we wanted for the rest of the season was run a couple more tournaments, use that month-long structure, play catch-up matches at the end. But it's been like super, super impossible with coronavirus and everything to actually mm -hmm. make plans more than a month ahead. So we, we launched the May Melee. We said, we want to do more of these, but let's wait and see both because of, of COVID issues, but also like wanted to see how it went. And so we, we sat and we watched the May tournament and, and it was awesome. And so it sort of made the decision to to move forward with two more tournaments really easy from there. But that was was kind of what we always wanted to do um, once once we started to have a chance to actually think about what online play looks like. Yeah, were the uh, the teams I assume were pretty thrilled with the switch to tournaments. Yeah, a lot of this the I mean we we've, we've had teams right like pitching some version of tournament structure for for three years now so. The yeah, uh, the, the chance to come back and and look at again, like what what were we actually doing the rest of the year? I'd I'd rather not have had any of this mess and been able to follow the plan we originally laid out. But th there's a bit of a I think a blessing of being able to come back now and say, uh, okay, what you know, what have we learned from moving to online matches and and how do we make it cool and better? So we talked to the teams a lot about it. Um, some of the specifics, like the idea for um. For making the tournaments have a competitive reward where teams get wins based on their placement in the tournament like that yeah. that came straight from the first conversation we had with teams about it where they said oh. money is cool but we want to make sure that this really matters and that everything's put on the line and and can you give us a competitive reward too yeah a little bit of a catcher mechanic yeah um i think for wins specifically, that's something that's been discussed even in NBA circles. There were some rumors about them doing tournaments and awarding wins like that. Um, can you talk a bit more at length about re uh, like rewarding wins like that? What are the complications of that? Because, for example, in Asia, there are so few teams. So if you happen to win like two or three matches, you instantly get in the semifinal, um, like Wang Chao, I believe, and they get bonus wins of that. Like, um, are you going to tone, tone it down a bit? Like, 
some extended thoughts on rewarding wins, like the problems and the pros and that? Yeah, I mean, I think calibrating that's like really hard, right? We were sure, yeah. we were trying to do it again in, in response to what we heard from teams and players saying like, make this matter. Um, and, and I think there's also an aspect of the schedule's been kind of messed up enough in the first part of the year where you've got some teams like the the poor Valiant, we made them play like the shock three times in a, yeah. in a, in a couple of weeks. So like you, you look at some of these things, right? You say like, okay, if the, the actual standings right now, we, we wanted to give teams the rest of the season a, a chance that if they're playing really well, they have a comeback mechanic that felt meaningful. We went back and like, we actually looked at, um, what if we'd done bonus wins for stage playoffs last season, for instance, like what would that have done in the standings? And so you you go and you look at that and like it would have helped Shanghai a little bit, like the shock would have still been crazy dominant and it wouldn't have mattered for them. And so we, we calibrated it a little bit that way. But then we also just like we, we went back to the teams and said, what do you guys think about three wins for the winner, you know, two, two, one structure and and got a good consensus from teams that that felt about right. So so far, I, I think it's roughly right, but it, yeah. it'll be hard to tell, right? It's one of those things that you sort of know when you see it. I, I love the insight of like you guys went back and looked at the previous stage playoffs because all I see when we like announce something is like, oh, well, they're just like they just did it like they just, like, <laughs> they're just, like making it up like where it's like I think people just don't understand how much goes into something like this, like how you guys are like you were just mentioning, like talking about this stuff even back in April. Uh, just putting this into play. I think it's cool to see like how much or well, I think it, I mean, we obviously know because we're like, uh, you know, involved in it at the league level, but for the public to get an idea of how long some of these things are in play and kind of thought out. Yeah, I mean, you like from from my perspective, right, you see like after the May tournament, all of this, like, I hope Blizzard listens and does more tournaments because that was cool. And and I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, we've we've actually had this plan for a while and I, and I can't wait to tell you about it. But it's um it's it's tricky in a lot of just the 2020 situation we're in like i i learned the lesson back in in february or march that when you get more than even a couple of weeks or a month ahead of yourself with with the pandemic like stuff just changes quickly enough that that all of your plans and all of your best ideas sometimes need to be thrown out of the window so we we hadn't said back in april our our plan is three more tournaments because we we didn't have confidence at that point that we could execute on it but but now we do and I've I've totally jinxed it. Something's going to change and go wrong, but it's uh, it, it's it's pretty cool and exciting. I think to finally be able to share with with fans, like yeah, this this is the plan for the rest of the season, and it's pretty cool. So are there any big lessons? Ooh. Go ahead, Ren. I no, I, I was actually just going to move the topic along, but you you're good if you got a question. Well, sort of riffing on this, the fact that you've had to change so much this season. I mean, we've had numerous changes to hero pools as well, which I really appreciate because it is a very dynamic thing. And if you stick to maybe the wrong version of hero pool for a long time, you can like stagnate, etc. So I really appreciate the quick changes to hero pools and, you know, exploring some avenues like there. Have you, a um, bit of a broader question, have you learned anything from this year with experimenting with the formats here pools to take into coming years? Because I can imagine that, you know, the ideal solution for years to come would be still that we do these home stands and go on the road, et cetera. Like what are some of the things you've learned from this online phase this year that you can bring with you for coming? Individual day hero pools, John, you won't do it. <laughs> Just roll the dice, dude. Just roll the dice no. for the heroes. No. <laughs> nope. Every, everyone's got an idea on this one. We we can just give give everyone a day, put them in charge for trying <laughs> bag. Let's do it. Yeah, you, you could take the matches on Saturday. We'll give uh, Matt Sunday. We can, we can uh, see who's got it best. I, I should probably explain the context as well for people at home who don't know the changes we made to the hero pools. Um, so instead, now it's going to be two weeks of hero pools at the start of the tournament for the first two weeks of the qualifiers, and then no hero pools for the last week of the qualifiers, and then the playoffs. Um, that's the changes that we've made, just just as context for everybody. Because we uh, and then uh, in the game, it's just gone. Yeah, it's yeah. like uh, you got hit with the men in black thing, and it's like they didn't. It, they, so, what, hero pools. Wait, what? That never happened. Yeah, I think for I mean for hero pools broadly, right? Like going back to whatever February or or January when we rolled out the first version of the system. Like uh, hindsight being twenty twenty, I'd uh, I'd certainly 
rather have made that decision sort of knowing or, or having had all the experience that we've had over the last couple of months. And and I think each version of Hero Pools that we've we've moved with in Overwatch League has been a little bit better than the last one. And it's been responsive to feedback from particularly from our pro players and, and teams, but also from fans. Um, I, I, looking back at it, right, like I, I wish we'd gotten it right faster. Um, and 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 had more stability in the system in in part because i think for for teams and players too like you need to know what your play conditions are going to look like if you're going to be successful in that you need to know what the expectations of you are of you every time that you compete like what are we asking you to be good at um but i also like when you balance that against being responsive to feedback and and trying to make things better like i think every change we've made has made the situ- the the uh structure a little bit better and and I think they've been good positive changes for that reason. So, well, we had like one last opportunity with Hero Pools this season. Now that we uh, went to all the teams and said, "Okay, here's what the last ten-ish weeks of the regular season look like. We've got two more four-week tournaments. We've got two weeks at the end of that that are these these catch-up matches. Here's the structure. Now, what's the best way to take what we've learned about Hero Pools and and apply them to the rest of the season? And so we like we talked to the teams about it a bunch. We came up, we actually had five different options that we looked at. We sent them all a note and said, you know, which, which of these do you guys support? And and a majority of teams put the system we landed on first, uh, just sort of overall uh, preference in terms of the system. And so we feel pretty good about it. I, I don't think it's perfect by any means, but I think it's better and, and feels good for the rest of 2020. And then we'll have the whole off season to think about what's the best way to do this in 2021. Do, yeah, do I, I quite like the the way that you've yeah. set up the hero pools. Um, yeah. At least from from what I've seen here. I mean, I've always been a big advocate for hero pools. We all know this, right? This is a, this is all... a lie, John. We have to. Whenever Bren mentions hero pools on our show, we have to advise viewers if they don't want to hear Bren speak about hero pools to fast forward f- yeah, four yeah. minutes. We got a timestamp in the comments. <laughs> but it's, you get it's, it's, it's four minutes. It's always, on it. That's uh, impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's always a balancing act, I think, between because the entire uh, idea or premise of the hero pools, of course, is to switch up the meta so that people don't get too tired of something being repeatedly played. Uh, you know, make things quite, quite fresh moving into the uh, into the matches. But uh, it's a balancing act, right? Because you've got to balance the competitive integrity at the same time and give teams appropriate times to actually practice. Um, and I think this is a very good compromise between the act of, and I know people in the comments can be like, you know. Brent's such a bootlicker, bro. He gets paid by Blizzard. Now he's changed his tune on Hero Pools. Listen, YouTube and YouTube Andy five two three, shut the heck up. All right, YouTube Andy. Listen, I, my, I, I think this is a good change. I think this is a great, great sort of compromise between the two to allow for a fresh meta for essentially alternating every two weeks. And we're only going to see teams get better at that particular meta that we see developing that first week onwards. So it's it's a, it's a very interesting to me, and it opens up a lot well, of storyline possibilities. I, I also think, too, like, uh, I think 2021 is probably, like, a, a cool thing to even... I mean, not really discuss because it's so new, but I think a lot of this stuff, John, correct me if I'm wrong, is probably, like, a test as well to see, like, what works in terms of hero pools and tournaments for the future of the league, right? Yeah, I mean, I think... Um... Now that we sort of have a good plan for 2020, the the work we've spent the last couple of months too, in particular, coming up with different ideas for next year. But there's, I think Johnny asked, like, you know, what what do you learn from this season moving forward? And and I think a lot of it is is certainly applicable for next year. Although we hope that the the public health situation is a lot better, and and then you actually can start to bring back big fun live events in a a meaningful way. Like, there, there's a ton that we've learned from this too of I think the monthly tournament structure is really cool um, and a and a nice way to balance like having a regular season and and events around that with big cool things every month F- feels yeah. pretty good. Like I've been super pleasantly surprised at how well online matches work, and I and I think in some cases like using online matches as a way to play some percent of the season and not have travel, travel which like yeah. right like I think one of the the sort of bigger issues with our original vision for 2020 was all of the travel that was required to make it happen. And and I yeah. think we can fix some of that for next year by, okay, if, you know, if Dallas and, and San Francisco are playing each other, like we we've now proven this year that actually Dallas doesn't need to fly to the West coast. They could play that match online and do it in a great way. Yeah. So there, there's a lot that we've learned. I think the, the tournament structure is something that 
uh, we're pretty seriously considering bringing forward into the next year too. Yeah, that's, that's, awesome. that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, just before we spend too much time on hero pools, it's probably the topic everyone wants to get away with, you know, um, but do you have any insight from the teams when they made this vote, why they voted for this format um, and sort of like the reasonings behind this is what the teams came to the conclusion was best for the league moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, as Bren mentioned, like there's there's a real balancing act on a lot of this. Um, and it, there were teams, right? Like a couple of them in the camp of keep it the way that it is. That's the best version. There were some a couple of teams arguing for make it a month or or things like that too. But um, I think the reason why, or the the dominant reason why we heard, okay, let's let's do two weeks this way, was teams all really liked uh, no bans for the the actual tournament matches, mm. uh. um, but didn't want to do something where it was like have the, all of the qualifier matches played on a hero pool and then no bans for for the tournament weekend itself because then you've got all of the standings based on like who's good without Tracer or Echo and then in the tournament that's not the case. So the 2-2 the two -two sort of felt like a compromise in that regard. We also heard from a lot of teams that um, that, that sort of first week after they get a new hero pool on Sunday night, like it's, you know, the coaches spend the first 24 hours theory crafting yeah. they spend the next you know two days like scrimming and like maybe they got it right maybe they didn't it's um it's always sort of funny for me to hear like the, the entire point of hero pools was to try to get teams out of like this is the meta this is what we have to play but yet like no matter what you do like it's it's what they go back to is they spend all week trying to find the best six heroes yeah so like now, now they have another week to do that which i think will be meaningful for the coaches and players and and also gives, um, I think, teams a little bit more of a chance to establish who's good in, in different comps and things like that. Like, we, we've never had a problem, I think, in that second week after after balance changes or a new hero comes in. Like, even going back to, to 2019, where you introduce Sigma or we move to 222 or other things that are like big, big changes in in balance effectively. Like, that first week was was super fun where everyone's like, we don't know what the teams are going to play and we don't know what heroes we're going to see. And that's cool. The second week you start to be like, Oh, it's, you know, it's may Reaper. Or, oh, it's double sniper. But that's, that's cool because the teams are starting to refine that. And then you get to that like third week or that fourth week. And it's like, if I ever have to see, and it doesn't matter what the heroes are. Like if I ever, <laughs> if I ever have to see this thing again, yeah. like, I'm, I'm never watching Overwatch League again. And so I, I, think it's, I think it's a good balance of like, give the teams enough, um, runway to to find their stride and to to optimize a little bit better but i don't think we we risk that it feels stale in week two and yeah. uh will will the hero pools be picked in the same type of manner using the same uh algorithm i'm sure my dog and zoe's cat would love to pick them again but i'm not sure i want to deal with the blowback of that yeah, we've uh, we've still got the computer making the picks. Like we we just announced the the yeah. first pool, and I'm I'm already seeing some like, you know, how, how could Blizzard pick those heroes? What are, you know, what are you guys thinking? Hey, I'm it's okay. I'm okay with those heroes. I mean, look, Brig, uh, I'm I would be in if I was a team, I would be in in a hero permanent hero pool of Brig. Just Brig I mean, around. I'll be honest with you. All this proves is that you are in cahoots with the Soul Dynasty because you've banned Echo <laughs> and, and, and you banned Sombra. So, I mean, well, I yeah, don't know. I, I personally like I watch matches every weekend that I say how how can I help Soul? Let's let's find <laughs> the, uh, find the. I mean that's that's honestly like the biggest reason though why we had to go with the the algorithm system because like the the last thing that we wanted was anyone being able to say like the, you know the Overwatch League is is Soul Dynasty <laughs> fans. So that's yeah. that's why we're going back to Sigma meta. We find out John's background is actually a green screen, and it's just Soul Dynasty and Shanghai Dragons <laughs> paraphernalia <laughs> on the back. <laughs> Wearing a profit jersey, good times. I, I wore my Soul Dynasty jersey actually yesterday. Um, I, oh no! I, I, I choose like you know it's, this is like a nice neutral. I think this is from Grand Finals last year that has uh -huh. no teams on it. I, I keep my Soul Dynasty fandom uh, <laughs> off of the the podcasts. What do you What do you mean you don't uh, you don't sell your forehead to teams for sponsorships and personal streams? I I don't know anyone who would do something like that, but. Just to it's, clarify, Sideshow is here, 
but because his, his <laughs> head is so ugly with new haircut, he just doesn't decide to show himself. <laughs> he's no, I mean, his camera I'm, just hidden. That's that's not fair. The, <laughs> that, we're we're just we're just massively unorganized and only have a well, four box well, no. shot. When when John joined the call, I thought his mic didn't work, but I think he was just so taken aback by Josh's head, he had to like stare for a second. And I was like, <laughs> John, John, you there? He's like, yeah, yeah. And just jo Josh just showed up. Yeah, kidding. I love you, Josh. He's in the call, so I gotta be diplomatic. But uh, uh trades and free agencies. <laughs> 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 I didn't even uh, I didn't even have my mic activated on the recording we so nobody about, even, what, we what, what were you going to talk about free agency now yeah, yeah. You've ruined you, it. you were just talking about my big fat bald head and how I no, scared we John we were just talking about new advertising opportunities in the overwatch league. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all okay well yeah. I, I've worked with Pringles before I'm very happy to exchange a lot of Pringles for a spot on my big bald head I have a great idea we should draw the heroes on Josh's head in like a big like four thing and that's how we should and, and he rotates around. Yeah, and he rotates around like a globe, <laughs> and that's how we should show the hero. I, uh, I do plan to talk to our legal team and see if it's a, 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 okay from their perspective if I personally buy the space on his forehead next time. <laughs> <laughs> the Overwatch League has an announcement, and this is how we're going to roll it out. <laughs> next week's schedule, you can find it first on Josh's face. There we go. <laughs> Uh, the the uh, trades and free agencies so that was extended from the fifteenth to uh, July thirty first. Uh, is there a reason why it's so late into the season now, or it feels like it's really late into the season? Yeah, the the sort of two reasons. One is um, we've consistently heard from from teams and players with the pandemic that having additional flexibility around roster building is is helpful um, and just. A, a need to be able to patch up holes later like the, the entire reason why that deadline exists is to try to avoid like uh, team shenanigans of we're out of the playoffs and now we're going to sell all of our best players <laughs> to, to the number three team or, or and to try to have some stability going into the end of the season so like na now that we know that that july 31st is is just before um the or in the middle of the the last tournament it's about a month before the regular season is set to end that felt like it was the right balance of giving teams more flexibility, but still avoiding that issue of of people sort of mailing it in at the end of the season or, or otherwise trying to game the system. It's like when you said teams filling up their holes, I was like, yeah, New York really just filled up a, a decent hole with Hacksaw joining. Yeah, they, they badly needed a Genji player. <laughs> yeah, they, so. they barely needed, but they, they really needed another damage dealer. I was really They're, surprised uh, they didn't sign Sideshow, honestly. But, you know, glad you have to bask in that now. So I, I think Libero's probably still got projectile DPS covered for them. And, and they don't yeah. they don't need yeah. a new Farah player. Here's but... a question, though. Is, is Sideshow now, does he qualify for the Rookie of the Year award? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, technically he would, a, right? Uh, we're actually, we're still, I think, working through that. I'll, I'll have to ask my team. But I, I think... Um, there will likely be a maps played minimum. So a, <laughs> I, it, yeah, it I depends mean, on, uh, on whether he gets some time. After I get on is, is, is he on the Gladiators now? I, I think he's I on the Gladiators got now. Yeah. I don't he recall got seeing a, a, a trade agreement come through for our <laughs> approval, but oh. we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to talk to Dpay and, and get, I, get I, Josh I, some uh, time. I think now oh. now that it's become so, sorry, this is the voice of God again, just weighing in. <laughs> now that it's become such a meme as well, because we just essentially ruined the joke a little bit in order for the fundraiser, <laughs> where I was like, "Yeah, I'll just get traded to the gladiators." <laughs> the, the, uh, Albert was talking to me, and he said that he was genuinely pushing for me to get a contract. Uh, I'll, I'll peel back the curtain a little bit. I was unable to sign a contract, I believe, because it would have messed with my visa, because players need to be on P1 visas, and I have an O1 visa. So so what Albert was saying to me was, he really wanted me to be able to sign a contract, and, and apparently the league was all down for it, but but it would have messed with my visa and like got me sent home <laughs> if I had uh, become I mean, a player. I, I would have been pushing John via text to approve the contract straight away. <laughs> Send him home. <laughs> yeah. while, while we're peeling back that particular curtain, the, the email thread we had on our side of um, are, are we allowed to approve Josh signing in Florida? <laughs> like, it was it was wonderful. We were all totally on board with it. And then, yeah, one of one of our lawyers pointed out that, that you'd get deported and we decided <laughs> that was a bad idea.
<laughs> so, so, I mean, just to give you guys an idea, like John, John deals with all of this stuff, and then he probably has to deal with an email that comes across that says, "Can sideshow join the Florida Mayhem?" <laughs> He's like, "I have bigger things to solve than than can sideshow sign a a, a fake two e contract with Florida." <laughs> we don't have that much time left, um, so I'll just I'll add in a couple of more points real quick as yeah, well let's bring it back. Uh, good job there, Brent. let's bring it back is there, is there any is there any news on the all-stars because the all-stars were supposed to happen correct me if i'm wrong in the middle of the season slap bang in the middle obviously not the case um what's the current plans for for all-stars yeah so all all-star and then the the new format for playoffs is I, I think those are sort of the two remaining open issues for the 2020 season that we're still working through um the, the plan tentatively around All-Stars is to try to do something fun like shortly after the season ends. So that puts us into the into the fall somewhere and just make it probably more of like a fan and community appreciation thing where it's going to be really hard, I think, under any circumstances to like gather all of our All-Stars in one place and, and things like that. But we'd already been talking about even pre-pandemic doing more fun stuff at All-Stars and more workshop game modes and and wouldn't it be cool to watch all of the best main tanks in the league like do wrecking ball racing instead or you know make make damage players play uno which uh -huh. apparently, <laughs> apparently like i think uno is like the number one most popular game mode in in workshop right now <laughs> oh. kind of uh an amazing i've never played thing. uno like ever or in no in ever. Overwatch i've never played it I once went to when I was playing poker in Japan, um, legally, by the way, I'll, I'll add, because um, gambling's illegal in Japan. But I, I went to, a, went to a, I went to a like a, a, a poker enthusiast sort of cl uh, club or bar. Um, in between hands, they would play Uno, and they tried to get me to play, and I didn't know, I didn't speak Japanese, so they couldn't teach me. That's my story it about Uno. Like, it sounds like it could be a, an issue. Yeah remarkably not a not that complicated of a game you could probably pick it up pretty quickly uh, ah, you you overestimate me yeah so we'll um i think we'll come back to to fans around around playoffs actually pretty quickly like that's that's something that we're we're near final on and then all stars probably a, a little bit after that oh no okay. uh I, I would request the uh, Thomas the Tank Engine workshop game to go in. Sorry, what? Uh, yeah, yeah great. that's my, that's a game my, mode. My viewers turned me on to the Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes, one person is uh, Thomas the Tank. Like the, I, I'm not even sure if we could do it because Thomas the Tank is probably. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's, it's pretty old. It's Thomas the it's Tank old. Engine. So, old. Yeah, maybe they would maybe want the right for promo. Yeah, or the rights maybe are the right gone. gone you know? But uh, Reinhardt is uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, and then there's a bunch of Soldier 76s running around, and then you charge at like warp speed as the tank and just try and blow people up. Hmm. Uh, I've not seen that one. I yeah, I assume there's going to be some real copyright issues. Yeah, we should have any questions whatsoever, to John. We should have sent an email, you know, about Look, if, if tank John engine, if John can know. get an email asking if Josh can join Florida, we can pitch Thomas the Tank Engine as a game mode for <laughs> for All Stars. I think it makes sense. If the people uh, want it. Uh, are there any plans to do stuff uh, like the Echo Showdown again? Because I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, we've got um, even actually over the last like two weeks when we when we decided to give the couple of weeks by for for players just to take a break before we we came back for the summer showdown like a lot of the conversation was what do we do that's that's fun during that break and do we run more tournaments or things like that i i thought the echo showdown was really cool the community liked it um getting our pro players to to play with streamers and contenders yeah. players and things like that i think is cool too so yeah. uh we're definitely thinking about doing more of that the the reason why we didn't really in this last break was most of the reason why we took the break in the first place was to let the players like rest and, <laughs> and chill out a little bit. And we didn't want to come back and be like, Hey, you've got a couple weeks off, but also like, here's all the other stuff you have to do that. Um, here's three weeks off with three extra tournaments you can play. Right. So, so we tried to do like, it, it was nice that the contenders leagues in a lot of parts of the world were culminating around now. We wanted to highlight that instead. The the Lunatic High Runaway throwback was a, a cool yeah. thing that our Korea yeah, team suggested. And so we, we ended up leaning into more of that stuff during this particular break. Yeah. Huh. 
Um, talking a bit more about the May Mela tournament we just had, do you have any extensive thoughts about loser's pick and that format moving forward and maybe talking a bit about map pools, etc.? It seemed like something the community really enjoyed and it gave some like strategic depth to the entire thing, but do you have any research or thoughts on that matter? Yeah, I think um, the way we've sort of thought about a lot of those choices is when you're in like that that more playoff scenario where it's what happens in this specific match matters a ton. Like we want to give teams more agency and choices there. I think like it feels more important to say in a tournament match that the the map that you're picking is is based on a, a team's choice or a system versus like the Overwatch League picked Hanamura next. Whereas over the course of the entire season, like we can balance out um, map pools and and map assignments where it's then important that every team is sort of good at every map because they're expected to play them all. So that's that's sort of where we've been on that. Um, I, I think it's a lot of fun watching teams, particularly in in the May melee. I, I noticed a lot of like, okay, we're you know we're gonna pick this map because it makes it harder for them to play tracer. We're gonna pick that map because maybe yeah. it, you know it forces a a different play style. And, and that was pretty cool. The, the data, if you go back and you look at, um, at losers pick, like in stage playoffs and things, the win rate of, um, of the teams that had the pick, like doesn't go up much versus hmm. if we had just, so, and it's, it's a little bit of a complicated problem, but if you look at, um, like assume that the team a wins the map, what percentage chance does the other team have to win the next map? Yeah. There's like, basically no difference in that percentage when the oh. when team b picks the map versus when we pick the map it's like 40 versus 42 percent or, or something yeah. like that so we're, we're still looking at some of those numbers and i and i think it's something we'll think about for for next season but i think the storylines have been cool and there have been some fun one-off examples in in the may tournaments but by and large i don't think it's been a problem in the past that's really interesting though i i i, I didn't expect that at all that's Pretty big, yeah. Actually, I would have assumed, even. yeah, but I mean, that's that's why they do the data research and we just see th a few maps a team win after they yeah. lose one, and we're just like, this is how it's supposed to be. Like, yeah. <laughs> there have been some like... thoughts on the three O's and stuff that there's less three O's, but I don't know the data yeah. for that either. So, I mean, I that's right. If if teams are gonna win a little bit more when they when they pick the map, like, presumably that that maybe helps with some three O's or, or things like that, but there's also um. One of the things that we've heard from our teams too is is this goal of controlling some of the variables for them. Like if you're going into a match, and this is actually one of the things that comes up with hero pools, right? Where like a lot of people advocate for uh, let's let's just let teams uh, ban heroes like uh, you know ten minutes before the match starts. And uh, I think there's a lot on on things like that that's cool too. But like we also hear from our teams on the other side of that argument of okay, so going into match day, we don't know, like, who we're playing. We don't know what <laughs> map, what maps we're playing on. Like, we don't know, like, what their lineup's going to be. We're not really sure yet what the meta is. Yeah. And then also you want us to prep for all these other things. And I think having, like, a defined map pool and, and trying to give teams choices where it matters and then try to give them certainty where it doesn't matter as much is, is kind of the balance we want to get to. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I, I assume from the team perspective, it's just it would be a lot like how do you practice during the week if you don't know the lineup your other team is playing, what the heroes in the game are going to be and the maps like I feel like it just kind of throws a lot in there uh, yeah. for them to adjust to uh, a lot of randomness. What what yeah. are you most excited for for the second half of the year, John? Are you excited like uh, like uh, is there any like uh, teams with some of the pickups that you're really excited to see or just the tournaments and how they play out? What are you excited for? Yeah, I think um, I mean some of some of the recent team transactions have been pretty cool. Like I, I, I I'm still struggling to figure out exactly how Hoxel makes NYXL better, but like I'm I'm convinced <laughs> that signing a, it, when I talk to like Ben and our other actual stats guys, right? Like Hoxel's the best player in the world or, or close <laughs> to it. Um, so I, I can only imagine that, that that helps. Like Sparkle making his debut is going to be really cool. So I think we have um, a lot of just fun player movement that's happened recently. That's going to be cool to see what happens with the teams there. And then per personally, like I'm, I'm most excited for playoffs at the end of the season. Um, yeah. Seeing like some of these matchups that haven't happened yet, like uh, 
it was awesome seeing the the shock versus Florida, but it means that we still haven't seen like shock versus Philly, which I've been looking forward to a lot. We we finally got that on the schedule. It happens at the end of June, which is cool. Um, so there there's some of those matchups that just haven't happened. And then at the end of the season, we're we're planning to finally be able to answer like, is Shanghai better than the shock, the fusion, the mayhem, and and some of those other questions that we just haven't really been able to. It, it's been a it's been kind of cool that the regions have been separated for that reason, right? Like, because there are some people like, uh, uh, you know, Wolf believes every team in Asia is better than every team in North America, regardless of, I mean, he thinks the Chengdu Hunters could be better than the San Francisco Shock, which I, I, I've i made that up. I don't think Wolf believes that, but... <laughs> I was going to say, Wolf is going to get angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, to clarify, to clarify, Wolf doesn't believe the Chengdu Hunters are better than the Shock doesn't believe that but uh, i think it does it does pose like a lot of like cool things where people like are are on one side or the other like oh shanghai is the best or no the shock is the best and like uh not seeing that as often i feel like almost has become kind of cool in a way that like those matches become even more special as the playoffs go on yeah now that um all the teams in north america can play each other and we've got like the group of seven and the group of 13 i I think it's been working pretty well the the couple of weeks where it was like the three or four teams on the west coast had to play each other over and over and over again and like this this loop like that the third time you see shock versus valiant in a couple of weeks like that's that's not a fun matchup as much anymore but i I think we're now at a point where uh, there there are these fun like you're starting to get these good rivalries and and hype between the regions. And like, we also can map out the the rest of the season schedule where I think you'll start to get even more fresh matchups in in NA in particular, where like teams that have already played each other three times in NA, like you're not, you're not going to see that again this year. That was like, you'll start to see, you know, more, more new matchups that haven't happened yet, which I I was like, I I thought I was going crazy. Like when me and Mitch did New York, we did like New York, Washington. And then I went to Washington. I did New York, Washington again. I was like, am I going mad? I was like, or did I just see this? I was like, yeah, but I think people don't realize that like how difficult it was to schedule that early on. And as things were just, in constant motion yeah it was i mean there was there was a point when we first moved to online matches right where like every monday was calling all 20 (laughs) teams and saying can you compete this weekend like are are, are your players safe like where are your players um where's your staff like do do you have computers and internet and and so (laughs) we were sort of in this period where for a couple of weeks it was like every week we just had to build a new plan for for the following week and that that's the other nice thing i think about where we are now is we finally have a plan for the rest of the season that that's coherent and like actually builds hype and excitement instead of telling now you can you now you can take some time off and hang out in your your nice room and just stare outside <laughs> I've, uh, I have a very long backlog of, of Switch games that I'd like to be playing, but I'm not, not quite there yet. We still we still have to nail down playoffs and All Star, and then probably uh, we'll take care of it for next year. Don't worry. Put me in charge. Name yeah. me as the pseudo commissioner. And <laughs> all Stars so, uh, will look like his mic thing with the duct tape around it. That'll be what All Stars will be duct tape. Oh, yeah. it is. We also. Yeah. 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 We we did agree to have someone on our team read all of your YouTube comments, right? So people could also suggest <laughs> there what uh, what our, what, our, what our playoffs should look like, and if we could take a look. Yeah, because I know uh, all stars, all stars. I'm excited to get like a talent takedown again because now we have Cusa and uh, Jake. Uh, well, I I mean we have three pro it's players, a, right? Uh, we have Josh, Jake, and uh, Custa on the it's talent true. team. So. Matt just it's wants gonna to be, win one uh, it's going to be beautiful because all Jake is talking about every time we mention the talent takedown, obviously live in the same house as him. It's always like, I can't wait for the talent takedown. You got to absolutely dunk on all of you because he, th- he, see, like, he, he keeps boasting. He's like, oh, I haven't streamed. And I'm like, I've got the 4,500 peak. I'm like little does he know that when the brittle maker gets on the main stage, <laughs> the, I, I transform. I transcend yeah. beyond he doom. Bren. He plays doom. Like, uh, doesn't matter to me. Just I know exactly careful. where to choose. We, uh, we don't ban Widow for, for talent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no hero pools. No hero pools. <laughs> no hero pools. <laughs> that would actually be hilarious. It's like, you don't tell us there's hero pools, and then you just we play a bunch of clips that of, can, uh, of Ryan roasting yeah. hero pools and just get rid of everything. That can be one of the places where we test bans. We can we can let Bren's opponents ban uh, Widow. <laughs> or I think it would be, I think what we should I, do for the talent I would quit. 
Here's I the idea. Right. I think we should let the fans pick the hero pool for the talent takedown. Let the fans vote, and we can just record videos of us pleading which heroes we want in or out. <laughs> Question um, is like, do you pick teams first and then do that, or is it you know you you know that you can't play Widow and? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, potentially Bren could not be on a team. We, I mean, we need the viewership, right? We need Bren on. We gotta, we gotta do a draft, team, right? Man. We gotta do a draft. We we'll do like um, WWE promos. Yeah. Uh, last question, Johnny. Well, I was going to say that I don't know if you have any serious oh. questions left, or if Sideshow, the voice of God, has any questions. But I I know time is running out here, but I think we wanted to ask some quick, rapid fun questions just so we can get yeah. to know john i don't know if we have time for that yeah but if we have the, Matt, we have do you want to run through it or we have eight you, can, you, you can run through some of them johnny you can run through some of them okay so these hey, are john. the questions matt wrote down which i didn't wrote down. wow you're already throwing him under the bus and you haven't yep. started well he told me to I, whatever we, we don't have time so rapid questions just need an answer favorite hero in overwatch soldier favorite Pick. movie Ooh. Um. Come on, John. Probably Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, okay, yeah. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Matt has never heard of that film. Don't it's know why he's saying it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not transformers right now. What one of the older ones? <laughs> it's, all right. yeah. it's all right, John. Last week I said that uh, the Transformers series was better than Lord of the Rings. Yeah, exactly, John. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's grounds to fire Matt, right? Do we have time to discuss that one, or <laughs> will we just keep moving? It's it's you. Move, on. move on. That, move on. Is, that is super poor taste. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Favorite game outside of Overwatch? Um, best game of all time, I think, is Knights of the Old Republic, the the first one. Oh. Um, Star Wars and, guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's two Star Wars answers. Breath of the Wild and Ocarina of Time are, are up there, too. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, there we go. All right, favorite sports team, like physical sports, real life stuff, outside <laughs> stuff. Physical sports, physical as sports. To virtual physical sports. sports. <laughs> like, can clarify. We, uh, I, I call them like ball and stick sports. Is uh, yeah. uh, for for me, it's the Yankees, hands down. I I grew up outside of New York City. It's it's hey. not my fault. Like my my babysitter when I was a kid showed me the Yankees, and do you think and uh... I grew up when they were like really 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 good too? So it's it's mm. been nice. You think they're I gonna win to... the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> <laughs> well, they have to. Uh, well, I won't correct that. I, I'm guessing it's deliberate, <laughs> but. Uh, they have to actually agree to come back and play too. Like yeah. if you look at all the pro sports trying to figure it out and, and feel very grateful that we're not whatever Johnny called it, you know, like like real sports. T sports. sports. They, they should just play like the MLB equivalent uh, game. You know, I was simulate a Yankee, it all. I was a Yankee fan, but Mets tickets were like five dollars and the beer was cheaper, so I went to those. I've been to a lot of Mets games for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So I promise I won't keep you any longer because we're over time. But Matt wrote down the question, favorite member on our show? <laughs> Good luck. Uh, I'm going with, I'm going about with the... Uh, this well, is like, where the diplomacy really shows, you know? This is how, how creative can he get. So, so normally, right, you would say, I, I love all of the children equally <laughs> and, and, and things like that. Um, for, for me, it's very clearly Nori at this point. Um, <laughs> and, like, cat. And that, that feels like an answer that's unlikely to upset yeah. people. So that's, that's what I'm going to go with here. Yeah, that's very yeah, right. yeah. PR is going to see this on Tuesday. They're going to bring up John. They're going to give a virtual high five. They're like, that answer was phenomenal. Well, yeah. the, the, the only thing that gave me pause is that we, we do have the literal voice of God here. And, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was ready, I was ready to time. mute you so fast if you said anybody else. <laughs> All right. You. So the rest more? of the questions Matt wrote down are not that good because it's like, is burger a sandwich? And what do you think about pineapple on pizza? Pineapple on pizza is a pretty good question, Matt. I do like that. It's... So John, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Uh, not for me personally, really, but I, I respect people's choice to put pineapple I mean, on pizza. Mm. I'm, this is a question that I, I'm just yeah. impartial about. How can people take such strong stances on pineapple on pizza? I don't <laughs> understand. It's the internet. The, Some the people like, I do, like as, so as the New Yorker, it's uh like people with fork and knife with pizza like that that i find hurtful when i see that like you, that is weird it's kind of bougie yeah that's something matt would do on long island right long I island mean, a lot of long islanders am i right yeah 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 long island yeah. Dude, you know, pizza pizza that's a that's a that's a good day you bring out the, the napkin in in here with the, no. pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Working the knife yeah no. All right. it's a ton of fun john having you yeah. on
Yeah. Thank yeah, you very much, go. John. Okay, Sorry, I have uh, one final question. But go, I guess go on, we'll... Johnny. Go on, one, Johnny. One question for Johnny. Okay. So this is a pretty big one. Do you know what D&D is, John? I do. Okay. If if you were to create your D and D character, what would you play? Okay, so dip, dip, that's a different question. The, do you know what what D and D is? Well, <laughs> like I, I've not played it before. It's uh, it was on my list of stuff to try before I, I had a kid um, and and lost all of my free time. But hmm. I so this will be like a, a dumb answer. But in pretty much every RPG I I play, like I end up going like that wizard or sorcerer or something like that. So. Mm-hmm. Probably mm. something along those lines, if that's a, a reasonable answer. Yeah. And you, and yeah. you can laugh at me if that's not D&D. That's valid. I mean, no? D- D&D that's is just the, the very standard, typical fantasy tropes. It's like everything. Very based on on kind of the, what Tolkien built up. So Yeah, so we would go yeah. like... Good answer. All-powerful wizard type type thing. Something like yeah. that. So Johnny the Wise, essentially. No. No one knows Better what that is. Better than Johnny the Wise. Better no. than Johnny the Wise. Why wise would be like I, I want to be all powerful, not just just wise. Oh, yeah, mm, he wants right. destruction. Mm, all see. right, well, that's he wants a great... single day hero pools. I'm gonna move this along very quickly. <laughs> I'm gonna end this segment right now. <laughs> you there we go. Uh, much appreciated for coming on and answering some questions. And now back to you, Bren, in the studio. Thank you, Bren. Yeah, what a wonderful interview. Um, <laughs> wait, <laughs> really did we go uh, to that clip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my course? yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah, that was not intentional. I was just a joke. Oh, uh, well. I've got these little <laughs> Japanese balls here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to get. Oh, have you tried these, Josh? Um, probably. I think I've already eaten them. They were given to us by a tail. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag ad. What the I an- loved about that. Oh, go, go, go. Talk, tell us about your little The your ants candies. were. We've got an ant problem still. I've been going to war with them. I've been tracking you them down. You put cinnamon with- though. Say again. Didn't you put cinnamon down? That doesn't really get rid of them. It just stop. It just blocks the pheromones. But we've recently been breaking a couple of the Geneva Convention <laughs> no, these, laws. These poor ants. What? Yeah. Anyway, it was like nuts, glazed nut. Ooh, what the? <laughs> kind Can of delicious. Say, most of them. Uh, wow. In that clip where we discussed with John. I actually criticized Sideshow's new haircut and said that it was ugly. Well, but I, as later on proved, when he put on his webcam after we recorded that segment, <laughs> I actually think it looks really good on the yeah. webcam. I think it looks I, I better than the yeah. My favorite was when John like joined the call. Like I thought his mic was like messed up, but he was just kind of staring at Josh, just getting like used to his, his new look. He was just kind of taking <laughs> yeah. it back, like, whoa, <laughs> you're, you're yeah. actually bald. No, yeah. I, I, uh, I I like John a lot. Uh, he's somebody that like when when he first like joined the league, I didn't really know anything about. Uh, but uh, getting to work with him over the last uh, few years, like although the league sometimes like it takes them a while to get things right, and everybody is kind of uh, well angry, it takes them a while to get things right. Uh, eventually, they they get there, right? So I told you I mean, this earlier, you ask. but yeah, if this was the 2018 Overwatch League. We would have been on the one week Hero Pools. <laughs> Like what do you up mean? until now, change the, was, the, the, change the was slow back then. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I think for a for a m- 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 monolithic company, monolithic, like what does that monolithic, mean? yeah, monolithic yeah, what that company. Even, what is that, is that even like mean? a pyramid? Google it. <laughs> Google it, guys. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> monolithic isn't that like like the old watch like a sign? <laughs> when you have so many moving parts, I think. <laughs> The iterations they've been showing have been quite good. Now I I'm, now remember. <laughs> what does monolithic mean, guys? I, I don't think that means. Well, what's the thingy of the tower thingy? It's, the mono, f- the it's, mono... a, it's a singular large block of stone. <laughs> of an organization or system, large, powerful, and intractably indivisible and uniform. <laughs> So like like the Overwatch I... League, of course. What, what did you? What did he say that one time? Uh... The erogenous result. <laughs> that was the that was the first example of a Brennism, where Bren sat on the desk and he said he was criticizing Ilios. Yeah. And he said Ilios brings erogenous results. <laughs> also, hello, 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 directory in front hello. of our faces. <laughs> What's yeah, going on with this? <laughs> oh god. This episode is a fucking. It's All a right, disaster, bro. This is in shambles. Nah, what Kurt's still hanging out with Johnny, dude. Kurt, the Kurt and Johnny. Uh, I, I mean, we, we've talked to, like, the league about tournaments in the past, uh, but I think everybody 
uh, wanted to just try the regular season stuff uh, with playoffs for just as long as it is. And I guess, I guess sometimes we look at it and like, I mean, we've, we've gotten frustrated in the past before with the format, but uh, I, I do feel like it's a good change to have the tournaments more frequently. Uh, it's good to know that looking forward, uh, it's an option, right? Included with some other stuff. Uh, so roundabout way to get there, but we got there. So that, that as long as yeah. we're here now at the tournaments, I'm okay with it. Also, the, the fact that we're playing online gives us more flexibility to experiment with the uh yeah with the format like if we were still doing homestands and everyone had already like sold tickets to the teams that were going to attend and stuff it would be so hard to just halfway through the year say hey we're going to run tournaments instead like there's no way that would have been possible so yeah it's interesting that covid has kind of fucked things up but also provided a bit of uh experimentation ground yeah if i were to take a guess i would say that it's probably quite difficult to schedule like a stage-esque thingy if you're having homestands and you need to have all these teams mm. traveling to different homestands and have them play like equal amount of matches and like separate into divisions like i don't know like i don't want to make an excuse for the league no. because i do think that tournaments are so powerful well, that we should have had them going into this season but yeah. i can sort of see where you're coming from where you're like hey we're going to have weekly homestands and adding like a tournament structure on top of that could be complicated but that right. means that i really hope we get the tournament yeah i think i think what they prioritize going into the year uh just off of like kind of gut and everything that's been said is they kind of prioritize like limiting the amount of travel like as much as possible for some of the teams and then it's also kind of difficult to have like a stage playoff because you don't know like when or you don't know where and then you're trying to fit so many games in like a shorter period of time uh but that being said i i do think we all agreed like we missed like stage playoffs in some capacity oh, yeah. so these tour these tournaments are almost like more stage playoffs because i mean every stage we would see the viewership grow at the stage playoffs right i mean and it was yeah. always like the hypest matches so i think uh as we move forward like the league I mean, even uh, I think this is a good medium between this and like what the CDL is doing, right? CDL is strictly doing tournaments, like no regular season. Everything is a tournament every weekend. Uh, I think this is a happy medium for now. Although I do like the idea of having tournaments every weekend. Uh, I, I'll say that uh, I do like that idea. Like I think just seeing teams play for something every single week uh, way, is pretty right? awesome. Yeah. Devil's Advocate, don't you think you lose some meaning with weekly tournaments? I think monthly is like sort of perfect because you have the time between each it, tournament. It depends uh, because I think I think what you could do is like, let's say like the LA, LA tournament happens like once a year. Like that's a special thing, right? Like if, if there's only one COD tournament in LA once a year, like you'll know who the winner of it was last year. Like you can build like history out of that, right? And like who's won the most tournaments throughout the year, et cetera. Like uh, I know group play is completely different every time. So I do feel like there's a, there's enough variation there to mix it up. Uh, and it's not the same teams every weekend at the tournaments. Right. So, so I think having like a, uh, a tournament like every weekend where you don't have all of the teams there i think is fine and then they also do have a lot of the amateur competitions at the cod thing so like it doesn't get streamed like that often it's like super hard to find uh but like when they were doing the live events and i think even now they're still doing uh amateur stuff online which is like 200 yeah. teams uh yeah, so that's really cool so i mean that's why they're able to do the tournaments because they kind of run coincide with the amateur bracket that goes on they have a lot of cool stuff with that. I think I'm excited weird. for the rest of Owl, though. Like, I just, uh, I'm yeah. excited. I think that having more of these tournament structures, having the two weeks of Hero Pools, I think that all of these uh, set us up for a really cool end to the rest of the year. What did you guys think of the Hero Pool decision? I, I didn't, I actually didn't expect that type of, like, format to be something that everyone would go for. I'm a with huge the... fan. I'm a huge fan yeah yeah because yeah i mean i am as well but i just i'm just kind of shocked that they had landed on that we get the beauty of a consistent hero pool now for two weeks which means we get to see a, a meta form for the first week it means that some there's not a lot of pressure on certain teams to really hammer home and find a meta they can kind of discover it over the first week and then later in week two when the meta is developed for that hero pool they refine it and we get to see the best teams 
uh, really sort of come to the climax. And then for the final week of, of qualifiers, we get to see kind of the meta form with no hero pools. And then the rest of playoffs is just sick where people are just yeah. iterating onto that. I, it's the best of both worlds though, Matt, you know? Like the, the, no, it is. For competitive integrity's sake, no hero pools at all. But if you want to see a diverse meta, this is the best way to do hero pools in my opinion. What a... Uh... Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, like I, I was going to say, I'm trying to find like what the reaction is to the uh, no hero pools in the game from the general community. I, mean, uh, I, I think that's great for the game. Uh, yeah. The, no the thing is, it's already exists, gone. Right? Like it, it already was gone for what is that? Like 95% yeah, I mean, of the player base. It was already disappeared because yeah. it, it was only there for masters and grandmasters players. Yeah. Which I'm happy is... they tried it though. Because, mm. like, uh, I am because I think like it was something where I think the community was really wanting like bans, uh, and it was like, hey, let's try this system, and maybe this is like something that's better that's not bans, uh, and I, I would say by an overwhelming majority of the community, it wasn't well received. So maybe yeah, this kind I... of maybe this kind of allows them to like rethink the entire hero pool process or maybe this allows us to get faster balance changes and whatnot which is also good do i have your permission to move on um i think no, we should say thank on. you to john thank um, you for coming on john and dealing yeah. with all of our crap Thanks, yeah, john. that's true yeah. um i am a bit skeptical about the two week hero pool thing and like I will, we'll see how it plays out but apparently people think that i'm just against hero pools overall but, um, you know, when it comes to in-game, I'm really happy that they removed it in-game because even though, you know, you're in Master or Grand Master or Top 500, you still want to play the heroes you like to play, you know? Just because you're low rank, you know, doesn't apply to just you guys. I, I like to play the game for fun. I like to play oh, Rhinos sure. and if Rhinos removed, you know? So it still applies to me, so I'm really happy they removed it in-game. Um, yeah, but we but, should um, get an opinion from a pro player. Well, Josh, I what do you think? <laughs> uh I feel like I lost the ability to talk about that when I uh, traded my contract to Gladiators. I, <laughs> can I talk? Okay, I'll talk. Um, sure. So the thing about two-week hero pools, I think that uh, Hawk made a really good point about the fact that like people, uh, teams tried different strategies out when they had weekly hero pools because it forced you to adapt every week. And I'm curious to see how that plays out with two-week hero pools. Because I'm worried, again, I'm not saying this, it will be this way. Yeah. I have slight concerns that the hero pool is going to... Matt was trying to drink without opening the lid. It was only me and him to realize. He wasn't say anything and Josh saw. And then, then Josh started to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to let Johnny go on with it, but then he, he saw the rest of his looking shot. <laughs> No, I'll just say it quick. Just screw you guys. I'll just say it quick. I'm, I'm concerned that the hero pool, the first two weeks, cater to one specific style. So, like, either brawl, bunk, or dive. And people play that one style for, like, two weeks. So, let's say, uh, you know, it's all, like, Sombra and Brick and Band or whatever. Like, let's say the first two weeks of the hero pool, the best composition is bunker composition, right? And then, after those two initial weeks, when you unlock it, to all points of uh, all, all kinds of uh, compositions i'm concerned that a lot of teams will stick to the first two weeks meta because they're now comfortable on it and they haven't tried dive or brawl as much because it doesn't matter as much in an open uh or it doesn't matter in the first two yeah. weeks. you know what i'm saying I, yeah I'm i know people getting saying. comfortable in the first two weeks and then but i don't think rather than trying new stuff i i don't think that's going to happen because when you like unless the bands are almost non-effective the the bands this week are what echo diva sombra I mean? brig sombra brig, brig. So, so, so you can't play divey kind of stuff this week but as soon as you open oh, those heroes week. up what's right oh the next week it's for the right, first yeah, yeah, for, yeah for the first weeks. two weeks but as soon as you open that up the teams that previously like dive i think will immediately try dive again because they know that it worked in the main melee tournament like people were playing tracer like people are going to look back at that time yeah. for like what the meta should be not not the weeks where Ooh. things were banned 
Yeah, I mean, I also do feel like, though, like, I, I'm much more of a fan of this because we get a week without hero pools before the playoffs, because I think we'd probably get a cleaner meta for, not meta, but I think we get cleaner play in the playoffs for these tournaments with teams Perfect. having, like, a full week. Uh, yeah. I, I yeah, actually, exactly. They've got a whole week yeah. to... If, if people start relying on what they learn in that first two weeks, yeah. pe they've got a whole week to get bullied by teams that are actually willing to put in the work. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't think it can last until I, I the think playoff. preparation is going to change. Some yes. way, you know? Yeah. But we'll see yeah, how it turns out. I hope it gets so. easier for the players, though. I hope they don't have to, like... And I mean, coaches. Yeah, and coaches, too. I, I think uh, that's going to be the biggest difference, right? Isn't it? It's, yeah. Not necessarily <laughs> the players don't have to practice as hard, but I think having a, it opened up a little bit is going to make it a little bit easier in terms of making sure. a practice more efficient. Here, here's something interesting is that like the general overwatch subreddit is actually split kind of like 50 50 on the removal of hero pools i mean it doesn't affect right. it, dude it, they're not even in there yeah screw bro. those people people there's there's people who like when they had it they liked they liked it uh yeah. they liked that it forced people oh. off of roles but then some people were like well like we were under the impression like basically there are some people who were like we didn't like it because we thought it would just ban the heroes we didn't like but it banned all the heroes we yeah. did like and then there's other people who were like maybe if we changed the system it would be better and then there's some that are just like yeah we didn't understand it at all it doesn't make any sense yeah the classic overwatch community seemed to be split between people that believed one tricking is bad and anything that stops people one tricking is good and those who like playing certain heroes and hate having them back. I'm going to be real. Like with if you. Genji was banned, they're like, oh, yeah, fuck you, Genji one tricks. Get out of my game. I'm going to be honest and with you guys. It's, you can't really generalize the Overwatch community because even the Overwatch subreddit, which is predominantly casual, right, in, in, in just the nature of it. Sure. That, you, you, th you think that that's the majority of the player base? Maybe the their attitude towards things is the same, but nobody really know, like there's uh, what I'm trying to say is a lot of the player base they don't know Reddit. You know what I mean? They don't go on sure. Reddit. They yeah. don't they don't. They're console players and they play with their friends and it's Overwatch is their game that they play every day or after work or every weekend with their friends in a six stack and they don't go near that side of the internet. But that's sort of yeah. where I'm like, those people who come home from work, I mean, this is just guessing. I don't, it's not even yeah. worth guessing, but I'm essentially like, if you come home from work and you're not really in the community, you come home to play your favorite hero. Yeah. yeah. You don't come home to play roll the D20. Which is why I think I agree, Johnny. And I, and I think this... the kids asleep, do you chug some G fuel and you just start fucking popping shots? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Anyway, so, the, the, uh, the, no. no, but I, I, I completely agree though. Like that, the people have a favorite character that they play, and they play it in silver or gold, and it doesn't matter what character they play. Let's be honest. The reason they're in silver and gold isn't because they're playing that character. It's it's because they it is they're, because oh, they're friend. missing a couple of more, more faculties, right? I but, I had a guy message me repeatedly on Twitter in my Twitter DMs, and I leave them open because sometimes I get some interesting yeah. stuff. But I had a guy just <laughs> message me over and over and over again saying please Sadhu you've got to get in touch with the devs Farah has to be balanced differently <laughs> on console they must balance Farah differently on console and like okay there's like an argument to be made there but sure. I am powerless I cannot yeah. help you I can do nothing I've seen that guy in your stream chat too I think really all yeah, the time yeah. um, but, but I will say I think that this decision was made not I think it's a good decision to make, right? Just, to, just the flat removal for now for hero pools. They've said that they, they, they might bring it back, right? In the wording of it, yeah, they might did bring they? it back. But yeah, I think they did. They said they, 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 they are disabling it indefinite, or I don't know how what the wording was on it on the actual post. But uh, as far as I'm aware, they worded it so that like it could come back. It could hero pools could come back. Um, but but I imagine they probably took a long look as well at the player statistics uh, uh, and when Hero Pools was implemented to see the difference between how much people were playing. I know for a fact, me as a personal anecdote, I stopped playing the game a lot when Hero Pools got introduced, like a uh, lot. Okay, yeah. So they they did say that uh, uh, they've 
uh, found that the introduction of the experimental card and increased hero balance updates has helped us work towards a healthier changing meta and competitive play without needing to disable heroes. Hero pools will be removed indefinitely from competitive play with no tentative date for re-implementation. Which yeah, is yeah. a nice way to say it ain't coming back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I I'm so. all for it, baby. I was speaking to Jake, actually, the other day in our kitchen. I only see him for about five minutes a week. You were speaking to Jeff in your kitchen. I was like, why was <laughs> Jeff in your kitchen? I was... I was having a chat to Jake in our, in our kitchen and he was saying that when he was a pro player from his side of the coin, I don't want to put words into his mouth, but like but he, you would, are. he would, I'm, well, kind You're of. You're definitely but, about to, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to. <laughs> he, he's, 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 he, would, he would be saying that it, sometimes uh, it would be hard for him to see why the devs made certain decisions from his point of view as a pro player. But as, uh, as now that he's in this role as like a, a commentator and he's seeing multiple sides of the curtain, if you will, like, you know, it was like multiple curtains that he had to peel back. The pro player was just one of them, but now he's a cast, he's peeling back the other curtains that are there. Like, is, it, is it being a caster or now just having to stream ranked for eight hours a day? Could be, could be that. <laughs> Could be that, but, but he's starting to say that he, he Jake's opinion on on the way that this the game is balanced and the way the game is generally thought out by the ed, the dev team. He's got a lot of respect for the devs, and I I completely agree with that mindset. Um, yeah. Are we, are we good yeah. to move on? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, Wait. John, Brian was definitely not, uh, what were you, at a poker room in Japan? I definitely Japan. was. I was at a poker room in Japan, <laughs> and... Um, the in between, in between, there, it was, it was, was for like, no I'm money. I'm not sure if you admitted to do something illegal here. It wasn't so I'm illegal. Just it, was, it was for no money. It was for no money. But, but I loved it. It was fantastic. I think I spoke about it on the forehead, so I'm not going to talk about it yeah. here. But the um, my food's fried as well. So. Wow, that that wow. that should be our new gimmick. We'll just tell the same stories with different branding on the screen <laughs> and force you guys to it's watch time all of it for the mid-season awards. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Da -da -da -da. The dope, the plop chop mid season awards. Yeah, we've leveled up the production. Uh, All right, let's start with the MVPs. When we did our live show in uh, in Philadelphia last year, we had yeah. like proper awards and stuff. But now we're in COVID. I mean, with uh, what's the point? You can't mail them to the people. It's anyway. We are. We I mean, I, I don't think any of those awards made it to the people as well. I also. I also bought all of those awards in a party city uh, on Long Island. <laughs> You're breaking the magic. I was alone. I just went into a party city, which had nobody in it, and spent like $300 on like ribbons and Dora the Explorer balloon <laughs> things. And they looked at me like, what the, what the hell is this guy doing? Yeah, that was but, in New York, right? Yeah, they're like, you're not throwing a kid's oh birthday God. party, but you have a bunch of stuff. I'm like, I... <laughs> I'm having an award show. <laughs> yeah. All right. I so had people after the show come up to me like, "Can I give this back?" To you? That was so fun, dude. Remember that? Yeah, uh, there was a group of uh, nice ladies who they had like a bottle of wine and they were booing yeah. people in the crowd. Like that was that was a good time. It uh, was you good. guys, is that on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, it's on YouTube somewhere. It's uh, on one v ones. Oh yeah, yeah. It's the Britain one v ones. Yeah, maybe we'll bring that back eventually. Uh, Britain's got a plate with nothing on it, but. Okay, he's, so about to, get he's about to eat some rice. The the Overwatch League has some awards, but it doesn't have enough awards. I think like the Overwatch League has <laughs> MVP, Rookie of the Year, Dennis Havelka. Is that it? I think that's it, right? Yeah. You have the, I would um, go the playoff ham the, with you awards have the if I was in charge. Why? Huh? Grand, grand you saying, Finals bro? MVP. Oh yeah, grand finals. Yeah, MVP. grand finals. That's, MVP. True. That's true. Because I, I think, think there's they like should have analyst of the year. Uh, because <laughs> I'm eyeing to be back to back with esports awards this year, as well as uh, the Overwatch League's analyst of the year. So I'm hoping okay. they introduce that category. All right. What would you do That's if right. I got nominated and you didn't? I would do the same thing I would do. I mean, what, I, I found out I got nominated last year. I looked at my phone. I said, cool, I got nominated. And then we went back to doing the show. <laughs> I mean, now it's pretty what much... What would you do if I got nominated and you didn't? Me? Oh, I don't, I don't care. I feel like we're the annoying more. sideshow. You should just yeah. let sideshow talk. No, no, I'm good. I, I just wanted to uh, to set the stage for what we were going to do here because we're going to nominate some people for some awards in the most scuffedest way possible, fitting of the Plaid mid-season awards. And, and we invented a bunch of different awards. That's what I was trying to get to, really. Is that, we didn't invent them. People have done this before. But, but I mean that we have just come up with some random things. Like, we haven't got them from anywhere. We just chose some that we thought would be cool. 
Like, they're not real awards is what I mean. These aren't going to be actual awards at the end of the season. They're oh. more important. They're the Plat Chat Awards. Jeez, you think the people in our comments believe this is the real awards? Yeah. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Matt. Well, let's yeah. start as well. So, anyway, Who? let's begin. MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just eating your curry. <laughs> MVP, the most valuable. Whoa, my bald head's slippy. My headphones fell off. This episode is so cursed. It is unbelievably cursed. I'll tell you why my headphones fell off there. Because I'm starting to develop a headphone dent that's really visible with my bald head, right? (laughs) So I keep moving my headphones like forwards and then backwards to try and level off the dent. And I had it too far back. And so when I sat up, they fell off. (laughs) Let's start. Tim the Tatman clip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen that. Oh, All right, friends. Matt, let's go. MVP. Uh, I have the MVP as Carpe. I wasn't sure if we were doing two MVPs, one for each region. Uh, so I just decided to pick one. I mean, uh, obviously, I would have to pick somebody else from the other region if we were doing it. But uh, I view it as I-, I think Carpe is so essential to this team. And I looked around some of the other top teams in the league. I was like, you know, like they have other people who can fill his spot in certain positions and whatnot. Uh, I just feel like the guy's been so consistent and so big for Philly that I would have felt kind of bad not giving it to him. I think mean, that's quite fair. Um I can't. I can't really think of an argument against Carpe this year as M, as an MVP. I think he might be leading. Mine's slightly different. I will say that. I'm not going to reveal it just yet. Mine's a little bit different. Um, any anybody else have any arguments against that? Any? I mean, the only argument against Carpe is that his team uh, like <laughs> bowed out in the semi-finals of the main melee and but like and, it's but, a one game. Exactly. Like. <laughs> they, they, otherwise, they've been fantastic, and the guy's been a beast, and he uh-huh. has been putting up crazy numbers. So yeah, Carpe was my pick as well for MVP. Oh, what were your other nominations? Did you have? Uh, other... I, I didn't put any other nominations. Oh. Carpe was yours, Josh. Yeah, Carpe's my MVP as well. Yeah, about you, Jonathan. Yeah. Did you forget my name for no, a second? I, no, I tried. I'm, okay, Johnny, you're going to laugh at me here, Johnny. <laughs> Did you forget I, his name? I, I've been trying to consciously remember to call you Jonathan because you prefer the name Jonathan. And I'm, so, I caught myself, so mid, I caught myself mid saying of Johnny and uh, Jonathan. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, well, don't prefer. I don't really care. But if you're gonna, if you're my friend, I'm Jonathan. You okay. know. But if we're buddies, I'm Johnny. Yeah, if you're I, a I'm, random guy on Reddit. What's the difference between friends and buddies? <laughs> yeah. No, okay. Just... So like, I prefer Jonathan. But if people don't want to go through the inconvenience of saying my full name, uh, they say Johnny. I'm like, fair, fair. Yeah. You know? Like, I, like if Johnny. I say Jonathan, I feel like it's like a work setting. It's less fillables, I get it, or something. That's no, I, the character. No, but yeah. Jonah, if you Jonathan know, prefers it, I will call him Jonathan. But, like, when Brent calls me Jonathan, I'm like, you know, serotonin levels go up, like, yeah. 1% or something. I'm so like, I'm, yeah. I'm going to make Are a conscious sure? effort. Are you sure the gallon of wine? <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, what did you pay? <laughs> Your MVP. I mean... So here's what I did. I messed up because I just put down my <laughs> nominations. Oh, yeah, let's go with Carpe. Five MVPs. Here we go. Go on then. Who did you actually have as your nominees then? Because I'm no. interested. Yeah. Who are your nominees? I, I'm no. curious. It's not list my other nominees. But I Why? no. Okay. So so Carpe. Yeah. Probably mid season MVP. I think it was unfortunate that you know they they lost the Florida Mayhem because they could have had a fantastic grand final. Whatever. But. I was curious if there was any case for any San Francisco or Shanghai Dragons player for you guys. I, I think I, there's a case for Moth. Personally. Dude, yeah, can you I wrote Moth shut down. up, bold boy? Because <laughs> my MVP <laughs> is Moth. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, well, it's a big reveal. You know, okay, so main support's going to be upset, yeah. but I feel like he is a main support, and I feel like naturally Carpe has more... <laughs> I, no, I'm not going to say it. But I, got, Here's my argument for Moff. This is yeah. the reason I picked him over someone like Carpe. I think Moff has been 
It's the most valuable player of the year, right? So you can't really take other years into account. But when I think of one of the most consistent players of all time, one of the players that is obviously the difference maker for their team in a role that not a lot of people really excel at because it's easy to fall by the wayside. I mean, in terms of actually looking good on the role, right? For, yeah. for the layman watching, it's hard to think of the best main supports in the league. But Moff does do that. He gets the boops. He... <laughs> There's the graphic. There's the graphic. Jesus. He, he gets the boops. He play. He makes the plays. He creates the tempo for his team. And he's doing it as one of the sole Western players in the, in a mostly Korean roster. But if you're going to take, like, some semblance of history into account, like, doesn't Carpe have the most final blows in Overwatch League history? Took his team because he's to played the most finals. maps. Took his team to the finals in year one. Like well, it's only this year. Down, uh, yeah, but, down, but they didn't, yeah, but didn't win. Moff actually won. Just brought up like historical. Bro, stuff, but I'm not talking really history here, man. I'm talking this year alone. He has been. He has showcased that he is the difference maker for the San Francisco Shock. Like when he, true, when Lucio yeah. was banned and he had to play off the roll, you could argue that diminishes the return. But I think it proves that he is so central to the play style and identity of the San Francisco Shock that he deserves MVP. Here's a weird one, and I'm probably, I mean, I might, pick get Rose, Did you? I might not get roasted. What is this weird one, huh? I don't know why I'm so defensive. Where would the Dallas Fuel have to get to in the standings for Decay to get nominations? Yeah, that's a really interesting one, because when you think about MVP, one of the arguments for MVP is just somebody that makes or breaks a team. Right. And Dallas, without Decay, is just not even a team. Like, like, if they, just, if they were, like if they got to like third or fourth in NA overall and he played this good throughout the year, he would have to get some type of MVP love, right? If he's, if he's playing this well throughout the year, then he has just put up better numbers than Carpe as well. Like that's not, I'm not saying that he's put up better numbers so far. No. But if he kept putting up these kind of like and carry performances, like a, he would overtake Carpe. It takes like a, a, in theory, like an inferior team to like a third or fourth place. Like, yeah. I, I think that would have to garner some type of MVP. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty well, strict so. on the wins. I feel like you'd probably need at least maybe like 75, 80% match win rate to be considered. I mean, that's. That's, That's kind of a crazy gonna be like, win, There's going right? to be like one team that can qualify for that. Oh, okay. Philly, they're 13 oh, and well, 1. Oh, Shanghai, I mean, 14 and 2. But San Francisco, 11 and 2. The new, well, what we're saying is but it, it's like a different roster. definition of MVP. Yeah, it's a different definition, yeah. It's like somebody that's so incredibly talented, but the rest of their team isn't. But you can still like, acknowledge that Decay yeah. is just a so, freak. This has actually been a long-form conversation on like Bill Simmons' podcast. Who doesn't yeah, yeah. Sport, yeah, yeah. Because often case, a lot, like, I don't know, baseball, but sometimes they have super good baseball players on shitty teams. And yeah. they're like, we can't award it to like bad baseball teams when they have the best players. We right. The team, has to be, the team has to be good enough. Like, uh, like uh, usually the MVP is on a team that is in the playoffs and a team that is, like, overperformed, like, et cetera. Like, you never saw, like, an MVP come from, like, the Golden State Warriors, uh, really, when they had KD because the team was so good that you couldn't really pick a player. And right? that's how I feel about Shanghai at the moment, actually, is that I the team like itself the shock, is too. so good. Yeah, I mean, the shock, I think you can make arguments for Moth because he's a pivotal figure and also Rascal because he's like yeah. the guy that the team hinges around. But I agree, they're not strong cases. Whereas, like, Decay just stands out so much on Dallas that True. I, like, I'm not even sure, like, they have to win. Like, if even if they lost all of their games from now on, 2-3. Mm. But if Decay kept <laughs> putting up, like just crazy level like you know when you watched him oh. when they played against the outlaws and he, <laughs> it was just filthy like it yeah. was just disgusting levels of overwatch well, if he end... kept doing that for the end of the season theoretically i think that they would be a well, strong argument for mvp yeah like, i think you have to look at it as like if if you replaced decay with the league average damage dealer where does where does the dallas fuel rank right now yeah, low, I mean, I it's think, it's yeah. subjective. It's a really a subjective. It is subjective. At yeah, most, yeah. At most I, they're a mid-table team. But I will say that de the likelihood of Decay popping off like this for the rest of the season, I think is lower. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it, that would just be bonkers, like nothing we've ever seen before. <laughs> but I think it's lower than Carpe keeping up this because he makes it just look so so simple. It, just yeah. everything he does is, is He's done it for so fluid. long. 
Yeah. yeah. So I um I had in my nominations as well. Or not I'm not gonna call it the, the nominations because I don't want to add pressure to potentials. Them. Potentials. But, yeah. So I wrote down and I wanted to get uh primarily your guys' opinion on Fleda or Void. Just like where they rank in the I think Void's fucking sick. I think Void is the number one off tank this year. And that might be a hot take to be like ahead of Troyovin or to be ahead of like Fury or Marvel or whatever the hell you guys want to throw up. But I think he's been unbelievable. You know, so you know what's wild? The first the first player I thought of in my head when you like it wasn't even Choi. I thought about Gargoyle. I was like, that guy's that guy's sick. Yeah, okay. I don't think the Gargoyle was that good on the D.Va early on no. in the year, whereas Void has been able to play everything so far. And like, yeah. even though even Choyobin's had some bad games on Ball or Zarya, but Void's yeah. been amazing Void's on everything he's played. Right. And, and it's not like last year where there was, That's right. like, there's no Janu to be able to contest him. Uh, <sighs> there's, like, Fury has been getting split playtime, so we haven't seen as much of him. The other top contenders for that off tank role have kind of slipped uh, a little Me bit. Mecca, and Mecca, Mecca's up. picking up checks, living on the beach. <laughs> hanging out. Is this yeah. Houston have beaches? I think so, right? Isn't it a beach? Yeah, right? uh, he, he, he took his money from the Allies. He bought an island. He's playing from yeah. a remote island. <laughs> they have a flourishing uh, shrimp and uh, crawfish uh, fishing population. Really? Yeah. Are they? Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Shanghai is so hard to pick a player from because they're so deep. Yeah, and like all of their really players have just been performing pretty well. Like, I, not, yeah, I, I think Void is the most appropriate. I think John, Johnny's right. Void is the most appropriate for if you're going to pick an MVP performance. I think, at least from my point of view, having watched and casted a lot of the Shanghai games, uh, because the, the the thing that makes Shanghai really sick is that they're. Their teamwork is phenomenal, uh, and they don't yeah. really have an individual player that shines. Sometimes lip. Um, you could say fearless as well. There's yeah. an argument to be made there, considering that their win rate has now gotten significantly different. What the the point is the one with 100% playtime and the one who's 100% of the time consistent. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, I think the yeah. carpe just stands out though for me. If he Not carries on this, he's also he's like gonna set a record for most uh, highest right, KD throughout a season as well. I know right? to say something, but I'm gonna yeah. you. Oh no, no, I didn't want to say anything. Right? Okay, right, well, cool. Let's talk about the Rookie of the Year award. Uh, this one's hard. <laughs> yeah, the this one's hard. Well, there's been two candidates, right? You think? Down to two. You have more. I think there's more than two candidates. Yeah, I think that it's actually. A pretty open race right now. I'm, I'm kind of interested in your opinion, Johnny, if you've narrowed it down to two, because yeah. I, I found it so difficult to narrow this down. Well, I mean, you know, I'm also curious who else you are listing. Because uh, okay, I, all right, all right. You know, Let's... The two the two that come to mind are Lip and Alarm. Mm. Yeah. What about Yaki? Is Yaki a, a rookie? Yes, Yaki's a, yeah. a rookie. He came out of Runaway this year. Yeah. I think that Yaki's been pretty amazing so far this year. I, the reason that I didn't go for Yaki Brand. is because he has had like a peak more recently than the others. Um, and I don't feel like he was that amazing at the beginning of the year. Uh, I didn't go Yaki either. I was, just, I was just mentioning it. Uh, I went with Lip just for the okay. consistency from the, and that Josh, position who, who where they play. Yeah, I also went for Lip, mm. but I thought that it was pretty open with... Um, uh, I also had Lee Jae Gon in there as well. I think that he's been really good. That's controversial, in my opinion. Yeah, but he was, he was like feeding quite a bit at the beginning of the year, and he's toned it down a lot. He's actually developed quite a bit, and he still plays like a high-risk, high-reward style, sure, but his brig has just improved enormously, no, we and should his do. are still incredibly good. We should... We don't have a comeback player of the year award, so we should delete Fearless's stint uh, the first time with the Dragons and give Fearless the rookie of the year this go around. <laughs> we'll just pretend the first go around never happened. No, I mean, I'd be down for that. Give him so, a clean slate. Nah. Johnny, who did you pick? Yeah, who'd you have, Johnny? Um, I'm going to be honest. I didn't pick any of the two because um, I, I've, I don't know. I think it's very up in the air, and I, I, I don't know. I You're guess in the I'll middle. go with Lip. In the middle between Lip sheep. and Alarm? I'm a fucking I, sheep. I'm going with Lip. I went with Lip as well. But I think Alarm is in that conversation, and I think if people have a, 
an opinion for an arm, I think that's valid. I went with lip as well, so that's all four of us for lip. Now the wow. reason uh -huh. the reason I went with lip personally is from watching him play. I cannot recall the last time a rookie has come into the league and had a performance in a playoff level scenario. I mean, I guess you could say Haxel last year. Yeah. But I don't want to call Haxel a, a rookie last year. It feels disingenuous, you know, <laughs> sure. even though he was. And I think he won rookie of the year, right, last year? Yeah, he did. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. But Lip, Lip coming in for his team in the grand finals of the May Melee, when they were down three maps and him and Fearless bringing it back. But again, it's it's off the back of Lip's gameplay as an individual as well. The, the, you, I mean, you, you know, you need both of them to perform well if you're going to be winning that match. But I think to do that as a rookie is uh, astonishing. It's hard yeah. to go against that. This year, I think it's much harder to pick because last year when you had the whole Vancouver roster coming in as like rookies, <laughs> it was like just pick yeah. one. Yeah, and there it is. Everyone Earth is owning. Everyone's picking lip. So, <laughs> Earth is popping off in the production. I, I think Alarm Alarm's actually one that I didn't think of, but that's a really good shout as well. So Alarm's had a, a really yeah. strong year, I think, for Philly. Uh, in a position that I think they've, I think it's fair to say that about, they've struggled with a bit in the past. What about Gang Bang Jin? Gang Bang Jin. Um, that's a, 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 don't don't know anyone named Gang Bang Jin. Gang Bang Jin, but I like to call him Gang Bang Jin because he fucks. I don't think that wow. he's had as large an impact as Alarm. So if you believe that, yeah. the, the way that I think about it is like if you if you can make an argument for the flex support, then you kind of have to put Alarm above Gundam Jin. And that also applies to like Alarm's at the head of the flex supports that are new this year. I thought Bre Bren was going to vote for his main man if he was still in the league. Bruce in or whatever. Uh, Bruce in from my boy Boston. Bruce in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, my vote. Yep. <laughs> yep. Cast that boy in the World Cup. Yep. <laughs> Yaki actually leads the league in terms of regular season match MVPs so far, if, if, if that means anything. Uh, so I, I mean, I, come on. I do think that he's definitely a candidate. Like, I, I, even though we've all gone for Lip here, I think that Lip is only just edging this out. I, I really yeah. do think it's quite an open this, race. This I view is almost more open than the MVP. Like, I think the MVP oh, yeah. is open, but, like, not yeah. many people. Like, I think this is, like, spread over, like, numerous people. Yeah. I think that, you know, originally we would have said people like Edison, but Atlanta's looked kind of shaky. It's possible mm, yeah. that they have some yeah. kind of research. Doha? Doha? Mm. It's, hard to, it's hard to look great alongside Decay. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's better than, like, uh... Is there like, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, like you're looking at like alarm. What about aunts? Ah, uh, that's a good shout. Good actually. shout. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, playing DPS for like the number one team from last year, uh, filling the shoes of like a former MVP and architect. I mean, yeah. that's like a lot of kind of circumstances to deal with. Yeah, that's pretty huge. There. I feel like people have. I, in some sense, forgotten how good Ants was when he came in and played McCree in like the rush comp kind of uh, times. He he came in and he just battered people on McCree. He looked fantastic. Is this in, he doesn't he hasn't looked as amazing recently. Weirdly, when he's been playing the Widow, which was like his main uh, and the uh, the Ash and stuff, but his McCree was superb. I, I think I think that he's definitely a candidate as well. Yeah, uh, and then after that, I think after that bunch, I still think, you know, like we're, there's a long list now. But then you add yeah. like Hanbin and like Krong maybe, and you know, oh, Krong, Krong's been really good actually. Krong has KSP, been really good. KSP's been good. Wait, Krong's KSP. a rookie. Yes, Krong just came in for the first time this year. <laughs> Dude, Brent, yeah, like for OT. season, Brent is finding out player names and who's been around. <laughs> Bro, I are you sure Krong's a rookie? Yes. Yeah, I'm definitely sure. Yeah, because they had hot sure. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Bro, why have I <laughs> thought that Krong always played for Guangzhou? It was Hopper that played for Guangzhou oh, before. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know, He's man. a mess. He's gone. He's Do you know what Sparkle it's... is, Bren? Sparkle? <laughs> yeah. It's the dude on the cleaning product, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh... 
Yeah, I mean, even there's players, right, like uh, Sparkle or XC, like if XC comes back in the second half and yeah. picks up kind of where he left off. Uh, a lot of really strong rookies uh, this year. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool award as well because it's not just going to be dominated by Vancouver Titans. Like God, I, like I, almost, I almost hope they break these awards up between regions because there's so many players who are actually like deserving of awards this year. Yeah. All right, what's the next one, Brent? You big Tell fucking... You the next one is. You, you look like you look like a character out of like uh some 90s yeah. he looks some like 90s, a, i don't know he looks like he looks a like dollar store Nirvana. he's like a no, dollar Nirvana store machine boy. gun kelly yeah. dude <laughs> he's like the dollar store version of machine gun kelly <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what the next one is josh it's the coach of the year award and this is one of my personal favorites mm. every year i come from my shop in brooklyn new york and i talk about my coach of the year and jonathan we're gonna start Wait. with you what do you think? Brent, he looks like a Billy Eilish fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Now, who do you guys have our coach of the year? I'm interested on this. Right, I want to start with Johnny. I want to do like a Stop snake. it. I just wrote down a bunch of coaches. Oh, you I just mean, did nomination. Okay. okay. So after the May Melee performance, I think you have to put Kuki in the conversation at least. <laughs> yeah. Because I think that you can't deny the improvement. And if the job of a coach is to improve the players within the team, I think the Florida May Mayhem has done a spectacular job so far this year. So you got to give a shout out to Kuki. K I love KDG uh, uh, for the Philadelphia Fusion, KDG. Um, but he has so much talent on that roster that it's hard to really give him yeah. props in that yeah. regard. Um, Moon, obviously, for the Shanghai Dragons, and then Krusty, of course, you know, arguably the best coach of has ever seen. No, he is the best coach of has ever seen. Um, so it's a, it's a tight race, it, and right. it depends on your definition of coach yes, of the year. It, the way, it's the way I want to do this is yeah. Johnny lists out his nominations, and we go through the rest of us, and then Johnny picks at the end where he wants to go. I get to be the sheep. Yeah. So, Josh, who did you have for your coach of the year? Oh, it's impossible, man. This is this is the toughest one because I, the, in, I think I thought like a couple of weeks ago before the Paris Eternal started sliding, I thought that Rush had this one kind of in the back oh, yeah. because his team, the Paris Eternal, was predicted to come into the season and not be that great, just be like trying to hold on for a playoff position. And they actually ended up contending for one of the best teams in North America. But then in the last couple of weeks, they they kind of went downhill a bit and they haven't looked at that same level. So do you have the recency bias and like predict that they continue going down and so you don't give them the coach of the year? Or do you still think that they're a top team? That's so tough. So Rush would have been my pick. But I think... I don't know. I'm trying not to be like a recency bias Andy here, uh, but... Uh, I mean, I think you look... I, I had Kuki down, but I also think it is... It, it's very subjective, and I think where you can kind of like... You can kind of see where the MVP and Rookie of the Year is going now. I think the coach of the year is so team-dependent that it's really difficult to do this one halfway through. Uh... I would say packing 10 mm, as yeah. well. That's also because, a great because show. I feel, He's like, on my list. Uh, I feel like just getting like a, I view coach of the year is who got the most out of, I, I don't want to say the least, but who was able to make the most out of like a tough situation in terms of roster or just, uh, <laughs> you know, not take the best roster and just kind of go through the season. Uh, so I think packing 10 is a tremendous job with uh, the Valiant. So I think he deserves some love. Uh, yeah. I think Kuki just was being able to put that roster together and then get results and play better than I think people expected. Uh, I think he definitely deserves some love too. Yeah. For, for me, it was between Rush and Kuki. I, I ended up going with Rush, but I feel like that. Wow. I think that, that, that's a whole going take, with Rush? I feel like. yeah. yeah, because... I don't want to be like a react Andy to the to the results of the May melee, which is the the only time where the Paris has looked truly, truly bad. And I I think that they can still turn it around. The the thing is, okay, Valiant, I didn't predict anything from, but they're the kind of team where I feel like their coaches have found styles to make their DPS pop off, and then they kind of let it run. Whereas Rush has turned his team into like a very cohesive team. If you, if you think about like the first 15 weeks of Owl, 
the majority of what we've seen so far this year. The Paris Eternal played very well, much better than we were expecting, like revived Ben Best's career and No Smite's career, both playing at a top mm. kind of level. Soon and Nico both playing at a top kind of level, getting really good results against top teams we had no idea that they would be able to compete against with, with people that weren't individually popping off. It was a whole team effort. So that's why I went with Rush, but... I I might look back on this and it's just like the beginning of a downwards. Yeah, this is tough. Uh, I would also even throw Arrow in there. Like who really? the hell? Like, I mean, Decay's been playing so good, and you can't like you kind think of he's coach the headshot people. But I I do think there is something to say about getting uh, getting that out of that tank line where I think people probably would have thought Gamsu and Note was a little bit washed. I thought they were quite good. Yeah, uh, but you were like the only person I think. Yeah, you were like, it would still be good. Yeah, I mean, you also before the se week one, you picked Paris to win the whole thing off of watching XC play like two games. <laughs> no, the coaching as well, actually, a big part of that. That's why I do agree with Josh about. You didn't even know who Krong was eight minutes ago. <laughs> well, no, no, I did know who Krong was. I just thought he played for some reason. I thought he joined Guangzhou at the tail end of last year. Uh, uh, I don't know why I thought he joined in like stage four, but whatever. <laughs> My coach of the year, I went with Krusty. And that might seem like a bit of a weird one because, not no. a weird one, but I, I think no. people are like, well, what about these other options? But I think people are, have got a bit too, too much of recency bias towards other coaches. And we need to reflect on what oh. Krusty has achieved this year. He's held on to the crown of the best team in NA, which when there's never been more competition for that role. Let's face it. You got yeah. Paris coming up. You got yeah. Florida coming up. You've got, I mean, I don't want to say Dallas, Philly. but Philly, Philly, right? Philly are now looking like way better than last year as well. Toronto. All of these contenders, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All of these contenders for this uh, this top spot, and Krusty has held on to it whilst his pieces have been going missing as well. Some of his core players have yeah. just been taken away from him. Uh, so I think that this is a really astounding achievement. And I agree what you said earlier, Johnny, where Krusty is the best Overwatch coach of all time. 100%. Yes. If he keeps this up yeah. and yeah. shots still yeah. look like the best NA team, That's he is the best Overwatch coach of all time and deserves the title of potentially one of the best coaches in esports. That's how yeah. far I'm willing to go. He yeah. should be there for esports awards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He should be. I think he, he is. Year. He was there last year, right? Yeah, I think he is. Do it again? Still... Yeah. Dude, he, I I, he I agree with you certainly for greatest coach of all time, but this year I feel like there's just better candidates because the, the San Francisco Shock have kind of gone from being like a he's really lost half refined... his coaching staff. He's lost a lot of his players. Yeah, yeah, he has. But they've gone from being like a very tight knit team that has a lot of like executes and they're really well coordinated to being like a bit more of a loose, uh, scrimmy kind of style. And I think that other coaches have been able to compete with less like raw materials, and they've yeah. the, the the power of the coaching is more evident on Paris and Valiant and Mayhem as well. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I'm actually um, I agree with Bren with Krusty, but I I think I have to give it to Kuki because to me, Coach of the Year sort of symbolizes what it means to get the most out of your players. And if this was the NFL, you know, you could always make the case for, you know, Bill Belichick for like the Patriots, because usually they were a team that took not average players, but like, and made like made them champion, a championship team with players you typically wouldn't see on other teams, you know? Um, and I feel like the Florida mayhem, the improvements they made this year, I think it's just spectacular, like what they've done with players like Chris and Faith. Um, you know, Gargoyle has continued to improve and his Sigma has been spectacular. I know that Ye has talked a lot about self-confidence for this team and how the players have approached the game differently this year because they have more reps in the Overwatch League and they're more confident in their own play. Um, I, I, I think that this turnaround alone for the Florida Mayhem, you just have to give them credit for what they've done with this organization. I, I think it's, I don't think you can undersell that. Like going yeah. into this season, a lot of people were high hyping up Florida Mayhem, but you know, a lot of the power rankings and the end of season rankings were like Florida 12th, 11th, whatever. Yeah. They made it to the grand finals of the main melee NA. 
And I don't think you can undersell what part like Kuki played in that transformation as a coach. So I, I got to give it to him, you know. I got a hot take for everybody because I okay. think we've all given our, our results now, right? Mm-hmm. It's a what dream. A, what? No, no, no. no. It's, <laughs> I'm it's sorry, not, dream. I love you. Sorry. What about? Yeah. Okay. Seoul made the finals of the Asia May Melee, and they went from being a team that people were just saying were double shield one tricks to playing quite a bit of dive and quite a bit of rush against top teams. If they continue to improve at both of those styles, is there an argument for Changun to have taken a team that could only naturally play double shield and turn them into like a best in the world contender? No. Why? No. Why not? Because that improvement doesn't come from most the players. Of the no, they've underperformed. Not most I... of the season, only for I... the first third of the season. Oh, I would feel shitty doing that. I had really? high expectations for Seoul. Yeah. And I feel There's like so many better candidates. Them, but... I, 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 don't, I think you can make an argument. I just think there's way better options. Yeah. Thank you, Kurt, by the way. Yeah, beautiful. Another beautiful, uh, <laughs> beautiful one there. <laughs> there it is. I didn't actually know what Rush looked like. I've never, never seen him in person before. <laughs> <laughs> We've you know been online this season. I, I don't know yeah. what Krong really looks like very much, no. Because he was playing in contenders online and then uh, I, um, and then I haven't seen him so far this year. I think your hot take is what you kind of find at the back of a 7-Eleven at 11 p.m., you know? What's what that? Do you, what what, is that? What do you, I don't actually know what you find when, at the back of the 7-Eleven. When the hot dogs are going off, they're about to sell them. They're like, bro, we can't sell it. Turn to midnight. Can't sell this. Just got to chuck them. So they chuck mm. out the hot dogs. It's a hot take, but it's kind of lukewarm because you're trying to bait me. I, it's not bait. I genuinely thought about if I think I think if the Soul too... if the Soul Dynasty end up winning one of these tournaments coming up in June or July, right? Then they've made a big transformation from a very inconsistent team to like a title contender genuinely okay. if they kept performing like they did in the main melee they're, they're a championship it, contender this is mid-season going. two yeah. historically gesture and profit and all the other team members have played a dive at a very high level so but they're they were just playing good the dive what but they were shit at it at the beginning of this year yeah because like, there's no other ones I, historically I, they've been able to but they have improved yeah, there's no but question, the question about is, it. They've improved. Is this for real? Because we were saying this when they looked shit, and then they looked good, and we were like, "What's going on?" And then they looked yeah. shit again, and then we made our predictions that they would go out round one, and then they made it to the finals. Yeah, yeah. They're I'm so saying, up and down. I'm only yeah. saying that if they continue to be consistent for the rest of the year, you have to think that that's probably due to coaching. It's not like the players just remembered how to play the game or turn their monitors on or plug their keyboards in or something. Like that's probably due to coaching. Okay, if you want to go too in depth, and I've had too much wine to have this, conversation, no. okay? <laughs> but there's two way to improve players. One is you get people who are good out of a slum. So if Bren is trash at Valorant for like three days straight, he goes to the gym and then he actually starts popping off. Okay, that's one way to improve, and I feel that is the sole dynasty throughout the season. Another way to coach and improve players is to take their potential and push their skill ceiling higher to make them better players. And I feel like that's sort of like what Kuki has done and maybe like Krusty in the past. Packing. Mm. But I feel like Changun this season, he hasn't taken Gesture or Profit or any other player on this old dynasty and shaped them into better players. If anything, he's managed to transform their bad form and their bad mental into a better mental to the to a to a point where they're able to play their old game and yeah. play with their own old confidence. And yeah. I don't think but I, isn't that I, I also put good? more weight into 
I don't think I don't th yeah, I, I think it's good. Okay. I just don't I just don't think it's like better than some of the other options. Like yeah. I think it's a valid option. Do I think it's the best one out of all of the ones we've laid out? Probably not. Yeah, no. No, no, no. No, no I don't think it is either. So you're just starting shit to start shit. I was just throwing a hot take out there to like prime people for the end of the season because you it's know, such a I, weird you, idea. Oh, you keep throwing out these hot takes, so you're gonna stumble right into a Johnny with the void thing, dude. You're gonna be, you're gonna get, you're gonna get God, dude. Let's oh start God. doing some Mistakes. of the top fives that we've got. I struggled so much with this because I don't know who plays. You don't know five league, players, but <laughs> I my own joke myself. But I, I. The tanks I struggled less with. I found it quite easy to really? find the top. Yes. No, actually. I, I, I struggled struggle with the tanks. The tanks yeah. were hard, man. I, and I'm still looking at this list, and I'm like, oh, my God, how could I forget certain people? Should I give you mine? Uh, yeah, go Which on, one man. have we got? Cause, have we got any preps cut? Because I don't mind having my right. tanks. I don't mind reading my list and forgetting somebody and looking dumb because I think the tanks was the weirdest one to go pick. On, go on, man. Uh, I had Fearless, Gargoyle, Void, Mono, and Choyobin. You read out the names too fast. I can't Fearless, even process what you said. Gargoyle. Okay. I had Fearless, Gargoyle, okay. Void, Mono, and Choyobin. So you play, you picked a lot of off tanks there. Three off tanks. I actually couldn't really think of like any main tanks that were like overly impressive. Mm. At least. I think that's, that's quite interesting right. that you had Gargoyle above Fury. Well, I mean, I've been I didn't really impressed with the order, order, but I just kind of had that as my top right, five. Right, but, but Fury isn't even in your top five, right? So Gargoyle's Not above yet. him. I mean, in terms of like overall rating of, yeah. of off tanks, that's quite interesting. And you had what, Fearless and Mano in there yeah. as tanks? Yeah, that's. I feel like Mano's a really great all round tank, but I don't think that he's been so, the best main tank this year. So I've actually looked like, uh, cause when I did this, I was like, Jesus, who even qualifies for this? Like in the main tank position and his stats have actually been rock solid, uh, for a team yeah. where usually like if your team's kind of like losing a ton of maps, middle of the pack, like main tank, you kind of like get beat up on. Uh, I also thought Smurf, maybe I had him like in there. Uh, but then I, I kind of like talked myself out of it. I was like, no, uh, that's where I couldn't really find. Uh, I'm interested if you guys had more main tanks and who you guys went with in terms I've, of that. I've got some bonkers takes here. I I mean, no, 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 no. Because mine was pretty similar to Matt. So oh, okay. Mine too. okay. So I had fearless mono void gargoyle and then i had sado right. okay, I had, uh, sado was on my uh sado was on my first list as well that i made i uh, thought i was gonna get roasted for that pick no. i thought you were gonna say that i was just eating up the sado stones no. but i've got sado as well because the first yeah. time i did my list i actually just took five main tanks and i was like jesus this is hard and then i was like wait where the fuck are my off tanks so i went back <laughs> and and sado was the one uh, uh main tank that i cut uh, I, I cut Sato for uh, Choi. Yeah. That was my last spot between Sato and Choi. You think you got some hot takes, Josh? What should you get uh, out of mine? Okay. <laughs> well, mine, mine don't sound that hot anymore because the only one that I've got additionally that nobody else has got is that I have... Uh, I, I guess I cut one of the off tanks. I only had Void and Choyobin as the off tanks in my top five because I felt like there's like... Is Void Choi's better than Gargoyle? Delicious. Um... Yeah, I think so. Oh, I wasn't that impressed with Gargoyle's Diva <laughs> at the beginning of the year. I think that he still has some way to go to prove himself on that pick. I think his his Sigma has been great, but if I was going to rate people just based on Sigma, then maybe I'd put Marvel in like a top 10 or something as well, because that guy's Sigma yeah. is also phenomenal. So yeah for me gargoyle hasn't quite got into like the elite tier off tanks yet like i would have fury over gargoyle as well i think it goes like void choyobin fury so far this year in terms of my off tanks and then maybe i'd be thinking about like gargoyle and then i, I don't know marvel if you can possibly like fuck away his diva <laughs> because that's just still a problem for for soul so, so i put in I, I put in Fearless, Gushue, and Sado as my main tanks. Oh, Gushue is a good one. Yeah. Because I feel like even though Hangzhou have kind of sucked recently, and they're six and seven so far in the league, if I was to pick an, a, a main tank that I'd be confident in on every role, Gushue is definitely there for me. 
He's he's a very solid yeah. on the Arissa. He's fantastic on the Winston. He's improved last year so much on the Reinhardt to the point where it's super solid. And so him alongside Sado and Fearless, I feel pretty comfortable with. See, um, this might be a hot take, okay? But I feel like out of my top five, I'd almost... No, I'm not even going to... I'm going to ask you guys for your opinion. <laughs> okay. I'm not okay. going to say what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you for your opinion. My top five... I'm almost oh, going to drop... Fearless. So really? So well, it's... yeah, because I guess it's like a bit of recent. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that was... and I'm asking, I'm asking, yeah. how much, how much impact do you think Fearless have had outside of the main melee in regular season? I think still quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I was gonna remove somebody from my list, it would probably be Fearless as well, Johnny. But I would say that Fearless's Winston has been easily the best that we've seen so far this year. Because we actually haven't seen very much Winston play whatsoever. So I, I, even though that sounds like a hot take, I don't think it is that much of a hot take. I, just I have a hot take Winston. later, but I'll let Brand Brand. And uh, Josh, I when when you made the Fury argument over Gargoyle, like he's getting killed by Gargoyle in every stat category. Even when it comes to the D.Va as well? Uh, in combination of D.Va and Sigma play, because that's what you can do on the right, site. Right, right. Uh, like yeah. six final blows to Gargoyle, and uh, Fury has the same as Poco down at like five. Uh, it's like Gargoyle's getting like uh, three more limbs per 10 minutes. And then in terms of damage, like it's almost like a thousand more to Gargoyle per 10 minutes. Bren is losing his mind. I can just see. It. I'm so Bren ready for Bren's hot takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to hear Bren's. Yeah. Bren's probably got some fucking special ones in there. From least controversial to most controversial. <laughs> Let's go. Choi Hyobin. Okay. okay. Do you Fury. think he's the best off tank so far this year? Choi yes. Hyobin. All right. Fury. Okay. Are you doing your list now? No. Okay. No, this is pre-written. From most controversial, least controversial to most controversial. Yeah. Krong. No, you Krong. don't. <laughs> Dude, he has been sick. Krong has been sick. He's On a, maybe... His Sigma uh, do we, might do be we the best in the league. Do we have a most underrated player? Like, do we have a, a, an award for most underrated? No. I don't think we came up with one, right? No. Krong would be my vote for most underrated player so far this year. <laughs> okay, but I haven't. I've got one more. I have yeah, one. Oh my God. Yeah, it's more controversial than Krong in the top five tanks. <laughs> Fuck off. Yes, Jeff. No. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. no. No. Not top five. He's only played Arissa. Like yeah. that's almost it. Yeah. You think gesture is be you think gesture is better than Gushui, Gargoyle, Void, Void? Sado? You you were doing yeah. 18 minutes ago, you were like, oh, Void could be the MVP for the Shanghai Dragons. He's not even in your fucking top five tanks. <laughs> because <laughs> Because I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because when I look at I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because when I think of an individual's impact on a team or their individual's performance, I think Gesture, when he's played Winston, has looked good. I think Gesture, when he's played Arissa, has looked good. But Arissa's always been good, and it's hard to look bad at Arissa, right? I know what Gesture's capable of. But when I look at Void as a player, I look at Void as a, a uh, almost a culmination of the fantastic coaching behind Moon and the team environment he's in and the reason he's succeeding. But that gesture, just, I would put idea. from a, on an individual basis. If I'm looking at it based on that, I think gesture squeaks in above. Uh, this now, is now, the now, most now, now, here's what I would, I would maybe, and and honestly, you may be swaying me here. I would, I think, I would replace him with Gushwe. I'll fucking replace him with fucking Roar for all the fuck I care about your list. <laughs> you, you, I told you they're going to be controversial. That is yeah. very controversial. I mean, he has played... I'm just looking at his stats right now, right, Brent? He has played four hours of Arissa so far this, this yeah. year. And then he's played one hour of Rhine and two and a half hours of Winston. Yeah. So he, he's played a shit ton of Arissa. Oh, and I think his, 
I think his Orisa is really, really good. Like his Orisa might be the best in the world. There's some other people yeah. that are also really sick. Like, they, like I think Fate actually played a really good Orisa in uh, May Melee, and then I think I mean, Krong, Krong's been good, but I don't think you can say he's been better than Fury, Choi, or Gargoyle. I've got Fury in my list. I've got Troy in my list. I think Void has been playing better Void than Krong. Void as well, yeah. I, I did, you're right, though. I did forget about Krong. I think that Krong deserves some credit, but I don't think he sneaks into top Dude, five. Dude, I, I have some of these tanks up in terms of, like, hero damage per 10. Uh, Void, Choi, and Gargoyle are, are all above 7,000. Fury at 6,500. Poco has more damage per 10 than Krong, which is just a wild uh, thing to even consider. If you're damage per 10, I don't think that's a good stat to compare main tanks, you know? Or just tanks in general. Uh, yeah, I mean, Personally. it's not great, but I mean, what what the what kind of stats do we have? We don't like, have anything hard, really. Right? I mean, because you're looking at yeah. a multitude of different roles. Like, you watch his play, you can clearly tell he's like good but anyway I, 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 i'm glad that I my picks have stirred up some controversy some conversation i suppose do we have any graphics cut has the issue. least deaths okay. per 10 yeah, on the off bank. and then it goes poco v void fury and then gargoyle yeah after michelle so interesting it should sounds we move like you over to um, we move over to dps yeah okay I Come found on. this one to be actually impossible. Like, I mean, genuinely yeah. impossible. Yeah. I, I've picked six. I just straight uh, up cheated. <laughs> I, I, picked, I picked five. You want to go first, Josh? Or... Yeah, I, I can go, but I, I can't tell you what order these guys are in. And okay, I yeah. also don't even... I'm not even confident that... Like, I, I don't know who I would cut to make the five. So I've got I've got Carpe, obviously. If he's yeah. your MVP candidate, you've got to have him in. I've then got I've got crazy. then I've got Rascal, because I do think yeah. that he's absolutely important yeah. for the shock. Yeah. Decay, because he's just been a freak so far this yeah. year. Yeah. Yaki, because he's been a similar level of freakishness. Yeah. And then I've got Fleder and Lip. Because I think that they've both just been sublime for Shanghai. Me and Josh have the same list. But, but that's I six. Have, I don't have lip. I have just Fleta. Uh, I, have him. I have a controversial one again. So oh, I'm not man. <laughs> what, what Wait, do you have you the got? exact same He's list? Got, got Dia. Jonathan, do you have the exact same list as me and Matt? I have Corpe, Fleta, Rascal. Uh, no. Yeah. Rascal, Decay, Yaki. Yeah, I mean, the order that I read yeah. the, wrote them in was Carpe, Fleta, Decay, Yaki, and then Rascal. I mean, that's what I wrote. Brent, I want to hear what the fuck this is. My top five DPS from, <laughs> from least controversial Hydration to most because controversial. because of its flexibility. <laughs> A drum roll, please. <laughs> Dude, you say, Jerry, you say Jerry on fucking Walker. out. <laughs> Carpe? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Rascal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Decay. Oh. Yeah. Now here's where it gets wacky. <laughs> you guys have listed some good suggestions. Do you not have Fleta? I don't have Fleta. I don't, don't, have, don't have Yaki. I don't have Lip. You don't have Lip. I've got two more left. Okay. <laughs> Haxel. Wait, what? Sal? We haven't seen him really. play! Oh, wait, what? <laughs> and that's not the most kind of right. So You're, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. You're right. We haven't seen him play apart from the start of the season. Yeah. Rouge Hong's, Hong's in my tank top five. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Haxel is capable of. He's a good player. The recent oh, pickup for New York God. Excelsior. I don't think he's going to see that much as much play time as people think on New York, but I think if you if I look at all the I just got a fucking inkling, just a okay. a, a tug in the pattern is pulling me towards Haxel. Okay. So who's more controversial controversial than the guy who hasn't played? Nero. Nero. I Nero. Uh, did did the Guangzhou charge start paying you instead of me? Putting Krong and Nero in your I top five. I have always <laughs> rated Nero. In the league last year. <laughs> I have always rated Nero. I thought Nero should have potentially got Rook of the Year. Of course, I had to go to Haxel because he made it all the way to the finals. But I think if you were looking at it purely from 
a, a, like I, genuine I think, rookies. I think Nero's flexibility and his consistency, he had a bit of a, uh, not a blunder, but he, had, he lost his motivation towards the tail end right at the main melee, but he yeah. came back in. He's my guy, I think. He's for, really good. He's very good. <laughs> okay, Josh. who was the fifth guy? Nero. 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 <laughs> Strokes neck beard. I, <laughs> I think, so here's, here's my argument for Nero being in here is that he's on a mixed roster team with three different languages that he has to work through, okay? Uh -huh. That's difficult, okay? It's a team that, that works in English, but they've got Koreans and they've got Chinese people on that team trying to mix it together. It's difficult. It's hard. He is young. He's living in a foreign country, and his consistency is insane. I kind of would want to... I mean, I, I, I don't think Nero... He is sick. He is sick. I, he is he's very good. I really do think though. he's great. You know who I would give some love to for top five that none of us have mentioned? And I don't know where he was on your guys' list. Uh, I think Godsby's had a really good year. Yeah, I had to cut Godsby I, I, and I, Ivy from my seventh yeah, grade rule, actually. Bots. Because I think that Godsby has been really good and very, very consistent, but he hasn't just, he hasn't like dominated in the yeah. way that some of these other players have. But I do think that Godsby is very, yeah. very good. I think Godsby and Nero are good shouts. Yeah. I, I think Bren has How actually done like, he's like no, one game. Good job, Bren. Like, I, I think Nero is an like, unexpected good pick. And I think oh. you deserve some credit for actually, you know, researching. Thinking outside the box. Yeah. 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 It was I think hard. it's a good shout. It was hard. Okay. It's time for what comes after tanks and TPS. Well, it's support. Uh... Okay. So I'm just going to go right off the gate. <laughs> okay. I have a hot take. I have a hot take. I reviewed the Shanghai Dragons against Seoul Dynasty mm. May Melee Finals. And here's, okay, in the moment, incredible reverse sweep. You know, they had some people come in, substitute in, and they pulled off one of the best reverse sweeps in Overwatch history. Fearless deserves a ton of credit for the effort he put in. Had some great primal radius where he um, where he booped supports away from the team fight and where he isolated tanks back to his team so you could deal with the tanks. I mean, I watched the entire thing. I bought review. Fearless had a great performance. I almost think one guy who edged him out, who could arguably be the MVP of the May Melee APAC Finals, is Isayaki. Mm. He was an absolute beast. He had incredible sleep darts throughout that reverse sweep. Very powerful biotic grenades. So many good nonos to keep this composition alive because they played a very disciplined style of dive where Fearless, he was great at controlling space and high ground, and he was great and in like <laughs> being able to peel back and then go back and gain space. Like it was, it was a fabulous play where so many players had great input. But Isayaki, I almost feel enabled all of it through his flex support play. And I have to give that guy massive props to the point where I even want to like make him my main melee APAC finals MVP because I mm. think his Ana was sublime. I think it was fantastic. Yeah. I went back That's and watched it with I went back and watched it with David when we were doing the charity stream uh, and we went we didn't go kind of as in depth because we were also answering questions from the chat yeah, yeah, yeah. but even just rewatching it without having to focus on the pivotal parts of the action Izayaki did annihilate in that game yeah. because he he was just tagging Prophet's tracer just so often so that Prophet couldn't do anything and then like you said the sleeps and the and the bayonets were amazing I agree but here's my question have have you actually noticed that in any match apart from that game? Because I haven't, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't happen. Because yeah. it, it might have just been that izaki has been slipping under the radar the whole year. Because he did slip under the radar in that game. Like, I didn't notice when I was casting it yeah. live. It was only in the VOD review. So Izaki might be just playing mental the entire year and nobody's noticed. Or he might have just peaked in that game and... Yeah. and and people notice. Who's I don't know the answer five? because they haven't gone through well, the, the rest, I haven't gone through the, rest of the Who's bots. the other four? Go ahead, Zaito. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. The first one. <laughs> Who's the Moth other four? Moth is in there. Okay. 
Oh my god, I'm so oh I'm so torn. I th I I think alarm is in there. Yeah. Hey, look. I have question marks. Do you put Jonak in there? I feel like you have to. I have him in mine. <laughs> and I feel like I've forgotten about someone. So this is my last one. And I feel like I've forgotten about someone. And whenever you guys open your mouth, it's going to be painfully obvious. And I'm going to get back. But I almost want to give one to Funny Astro. I was, uh, I was considering Funny Astro, yeah. I considered him, but I decided not to in the end. I thought there were a couple of candidates that I would put in before Funny Astro. I decided not to in the end as well. Right. But, I mean, you can pick anything because Bren has selected Hacksaw in his top five and he's only played an hour and 20 minutes in we're in week 17. You guys don't have Custer in your top five support? <laughs> <laughs> go on then, Matt. Who did you go for? Uh, I had Moth, Violet, Alarm, Jonak, and then I put Shu in my top five. Mm, Shu. Yeah, I... I think that the one that you miss out, Johnny, is Violet. I think his Batiste has been easily oh, yes. the best Batiste yeah. in the world. Sick, yeah. Yeah. So even though Violet still it's plays awesome. like Violet still plays like hyper aggressive and quite individual, like he's quite greedy with his Batiste, and he sometimes gets caught out. But my God, the guy can just do work like yeah. nobody else. So. I, I felt last, like you had to put him in there. My last one, I debated. Uh, I debated uh, Gangnam Jin, Shu, Funny Astro. I wanted to try and get another main support in there, um, yeah. which is why I thought Funny Astro. What about Lee J Gong? I, I, like was, I was between... Casim, he's just feeding. feeding. <laughs> yeah, he does have a very high-risk, high-reward play style, but I, I've been so impressed with his Brig recently. He's played a lot of Brig, and he's got, like, one of the yeah. best Brigs in the league, actually. Uh, and that was only something that happened, I don't know, within the last five weeks, I think. He made, like, really <sighs> rapid developments on it. I mean, that's a f uh, no, not really. For, I was going to say somebody else, but... For me, Lee Jae Gon was the sixth-place person that I had to delete, uh -huh. and I did go with Iziaki. But that I will say that I, the reason that I went with Iziaki at fifth place was because... I'm kind of assuming that I just missed him playing amazingly in some of the other games. I'm like, it's a bit of like a, it's a bit of an ignorant punt because I haven't gone and VOD reviewed all of his matches. I don't know whether the, the May Melee was like a standout performance from him. I've just noticed him playing pretty well normally, yeah. but I haven't, I, I no, haven't I gone through and watched his POV. So I don't know whether he normally plays like a fucking freak like he did in that game. Yeah, I agree. Who's your other players, Josh? Oh, I had I had Violet, Moth, Alarm, Joe Nack, Lee Jae Gon. Like gotcha. the, uh, sorry, not Lee Jae Gon, uh, Iziaki. I so, this yeah. isn't as controversial, I've realized. Um uh, for my picks, that is. Uh let's start from the top. Moth, I think, uh is my MVP, yeah. so he has to be up there. Um I have Alarm. I have Jonak. Um, and then for my last two, I went with Shu. And I went with uh, Gang Bang Jin, you know, the old boy, fucking all really? over the place, yeah. the young king. Um, you know, I'm actually, I'm Jin, actually, but... you know, quite happy with that because part of yeah. me thought you were gonna say like Lingsa, so I'm like. <laughs> well, do you know who's Pretty actually? Awesome. Do you know who could be a shout that I, I didn't want to do, but could have been a shout? FD God Molly. I Molly. actually got FD God as well. Molly's been really good. In Molly the could have been a played. shout, but I Molly's been really good. I don't think top five, but underrated for sure. Yeah, what do you guys think about FD God? Because I was tempted to try yeah. and put him in there. He's been a beast yeah, on like, Lucio, yeah, and he got better on Brig. He was when really thought, uh, shit at Brig at the beginning. When I thought of another main support for me, it was between Funny Astro and FD God. Those are the two I thought about. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I ended up not quite putting him in, but I think that he's I, and. I think that he's got like an outside shot at some kind of rookie of the year thing if Lucio just gets played yeah, for the whole of the rest sure. of the year. But yeah. I just rather take Lee Jae Gon than FD Gon. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Pretty tough then to, to well, we we've got some a lot of similarities. I think Alarm and Moth, yeah. right? Big crossover. So Yeah. Interesting. And Violet. Uh, did you have I Violet? Didn't have as Violet. Well, oh, you didn't? Yeah. No. Um <laughs> But that's, um, that might just be my bias from pretty much only casting Asian games, you know? Yeah. Um, All right. Um, anyway, let's move on to our next 
topic, and it is the best plays of the oh. year up to now. Mm. <sighs> the, did you guys pick like more than one play or I just one. like a? I picked one. I picked one as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, who who, 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 who kicks this one off? Okay, I'll kick it off with my one then. I did but... Flutter's um, clutching of the defense on King's Row to turn around and start yeah. the reverse sweep. I that thought this was one of the sickest plays we have ever seen, just on the context of the match, right? Because this was the map that they had to turn it around. Did you guys all pick this one? No. No. Oh, I didn't pick this one either. Yeah, this was the... This was the oh, well, this isn't it. But... Uh, no, this nope. is, this is mine. No, you've revealed my pick. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the pick, yeah. So Fl I mean, it, it, it's a pretty memorable moment because it was just fucking absurd. He just gets four kills out of spawn by switching over to Widowmaker. Uh, nuts moment, unfortunately ruined by the delay um, in the audio. But hey ho, yeah. you know. It was sick. It was also really cool to watch. <laughs> really cool and also really like brain numbing. To watch this play just being repeated in all of the May Melee yeah. highlight videos, because yeah, it it's like it's a once in a season kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. like he just. I mean, dear, I mean that music in the oh, movie. Yeah. This wasn't where the reverse sweep started. I was incorrect for some reason. I thought this was where it was map four, but no, it was it was towards the end. But it, it essentially was looking like a very sticky scenario for the Shanghai Dragons. You know. Yeah. 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 The part movie. of me that didn't want to pick it was that. Did you guys feel like it was a bit of a cleanup? I mean, obviously, not taking away anything from the guy. Incredible headshots. Like, once almost, in a season kind of moment. But I, I, I almost didn't pick it because I watched 90 videos of the fan-made movies <laughs> of it, and then it kind of ruined the play for me. I, I, I don't know. I, in the moment when I was casting it live, it seemed like... Uh, Soul had a very winnable position there, and then Fletter came out on Widowmaker, and he kind of bopped. Like yeah. they had a they had a Diva and a Brig somewhere near the payload. Then they had an Anna supporting and a Sombra. Was it on the payload? I don't know who he well? killed first, but they yeah. I mean, yeah, I can't remember. It was the opening pick to just cement it. It it, it could have been one winnable without Fletter, but I think it would have been much harder. And yeah. but he just yeah came out swinging uh what did you have then johnny uh what's the order kurt want to reveal yeah, what do you does want kurt have an order first? yeah we just revealed mine what, what what's the next one you want to do okay johnny's but it's not time stamped so john nefun well <laughs> I, I wrote the time to it. him it was uh, one hour and one minute into the vod but anyway my play time of the year, it's not in the main melee, so it doesn't have the same kind of importance to it that Brent yeah. has. But I thought it was a really innovative play. And I thought, you know, I'm a Reinhardt main, so you know what I got to go for. Oh it's my, my boy yeah. jumping from the payload to the roof oh and my shattering God, yeah. all of them. This is Absolute sick. beast performance. I mean, yeah, you know, Mitch's casting really it's just like the cherry on top because he it plays into like how unexpected it was for him to just step up there and just throw down the hammer and literally just stun all of dallas fuel i mean yeah i mean this is a uh, this is a fucking uh this is a valiant go back in the beginning of the year too i mean um i mean we needed lots of coffee for this one we thought this was the beginning of the dream is yeah. playing instead of gig yeah yeah. yeah, Dreamer hits some ridiculous shadows. Like, it seems like he just hunts for them. It's a wild series as well, overall, just because, like, this is the one where they just ran Decay Tracer into Torbjorn the entire uh, time yeah. and, and just won. melted. Yeah. Can you go back, yeah. Kurt? Can you play it again? I just, I, I need to see it again. <laughs> like, it was will, it will so good. Just go what back to like? one minute. One minute, yeah. Oh my God, here it is. He tries okay. it first. It's look, so look, good. he tries it there and he fails. You need, speed, oh you need to lose your speed. You need to lose your speed. I think that's wild. That is really good. Yeah, in, in that's sick. I, Biased, I found I found this award to be really difficult because I could only like the recency bias makes you think only about the plays that you've recently seen yeah. in like the main melee. So I I knew that there'd be stuff like that that I'd forgotten about. Like I genuinely just forgot that that had even occurred. I went way back. Did what you? Did, what did you do? Uh, well, hold on. What, what did you do, um, Josh? Because I think Kurt's having trouble finding your clip. 
Matt, I don't know if you want to send him a message. Oh. My my clip was from the San, uh, the the Shanghai Seoul uh, finals, and it was a flank from Fitz. So like weirdly, I've picked a play from oh, the losing dude. team. Yeah. But but okay. So like to set up the context for this, the the Seoul Dynasty are defending on this final map of the series, this seventh map, and they lose a player early on. They lose profit defending point A. And so the only way for them to be able to win is if someone makes a play and like turns it around. You can't just sit there 6v5, you, you will lose. So Fitz flanks on defending Widow Un and just hits three shots, just so crispy one after another and nearly gets this point A defense. He was on fire on defense here. So as soon as this swaps over to his point of view, you'll be able to see like the kill feed pops up. Okay, Profit goes down. And the Soul this Dynasty have to make a, a play. And he just whips around the back, kills the Batiste, kills the Widowmaker, Damn. and then snipes the May. And even yeah. though he goes down, he saves this defense for his team. And yeah. honestly, the Soul Dynasty had their chances to full hold on point A here and just win the series outright and be the May Melee champions. And, and if they had managed to do that, it would have been because all because of Fitz on the Widowmaker at this point A. So I thought that, like, even though it wasn't, the match defining play and it wasn't the winners it had the potential to be and it was like that kind of like nutty play yeah. that combines it was like that the brain magic with the yes. with the mechanics when i saw you this know, like, like i couldn't believe what i was witnessing yeah i just started screaming what what <laughs> yeah all right matt what did you have Oh, you're, oh, you're, you're, you're muted on Discord. Oh, man. I'm not muted. I'm not muted. I had to restart my OBS. Uh, <laughs> I went all the way back to a game that doesn't really mean much of anything now. But this is, I, I was there in person, and I think this means a little bit more to me because the home stands were going on. And Carpe switched to Widowmaker here at 99.99, and he just fucking goes crazy against the Justice to flip the point back. And the crowd was going like crazy. Oh, yeah. Wolf and Seth are going nuts. Like this play, because I remember I was watching this with Mitch, and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? And then, yeah. like, yeah. And then like he just fucking it's something only carpe does right like he just switches to widow and just comes just, out of spawn and just yeah. dunks on like four people and i think that clip uh i think it's great because it's carpe doing something amazing which you kind of think like of like an mvp type of play and then also we still had the crowd and everything there which makes me feel sad but I'd also, also about it I, you've just reminded me of two other moments that have lodged back into my memory from the early days of homestands because to there's, me like go on johnny i just want to say there's one moment which after you're done you know uh, i'll say it but there's one play that listeners are currently molding that we haven't brought up and i thought someone else would bring it up but the go ahead josh. Graph. i, I... <laughs> last what the <laughs> Come on, Josh. Like, I've awesome. just, I kind of, in my brain, the beginning of this year with homestands yeah. was almost like a separate season. Like yeah, I've almost yeah. forgotten that it even occurred. That's how it so I didn't like think me. of any plays from that yeah. time. But yeah. when we got our first, was it like our first day of casting and Haxal came out with the Nanoblade yeah. against the Gladiators yeah. on yeah. Point B Hanamura? That yeah. was an amazing play. And then also the. Uh, raw for the Washington Justice when he comes out and he landed a five man shatter against London at yeah. the Washington Justice and and oh, it was like yes. the fifth map and he walks past uh, oh, yeah. J Max Shield oh, lands yeah. a five man shatter and then they lose they lose they, like they yeah. lost straight afterwards it was like a an insane like the crowd made that moment though it like they were elated. They were absolutely just jizzing their pants, all of the, <laughs> all of the Washington fans. And then you could have heard a pin drop as yeah, soon as Corey died. Yeah, it was died. brutal. Yeah, and, and wow. sorry we don't have a clip, but I've just thought about yeah, them right now because I, I totally forgot the homestands even occurred this year. I found some of those clips to be the best where you could hear the crowds from the homestand, and then I thought that one was pretty uh, yeah. fitting. Hacksaw Dragonblade one was in that video that I linked Wh as which, well. But... Which one did you think, Johnny? Um, I'm finding... A clip, uh, and you think that this is the one that all the viewers all think of? Yes, really. I, I can't. Okay, so I can't even think Kurt. of what it would be. I don't know. Kurt, can I? I'm sending it to Kurt on Discord. I hope this is okay. Can you send it to the Beta Boys account? Yeah. Was it uh, in the main yeah. LA? No, but I sent it to him, and you'll when you see it, you'll know why. Okay. What was this? Oh. Oh. oh this, this one. This yeah. is pretty. 
decent. This was this sick, was really actually. Good. But yeah. I cast it that and I didn't even think of it. I'm gonna be yeah. real though. I don't. Ah, it's this sounds like such a it's not the play though. It's a sick play. It's not the play though. I also think that like this is a this is a set play, and oh, why do I believe this? I'm trying to articulate myself properly here, but because this is a set play, it's more like the timing was good. There's nothing. Yeah. Get the, no, oh, what? I'm about to skills. dig myself into a hole here. There but, is a yeah. context that makes it great. <laughs> but, because but I this... think they're down three members, and it's overtime. Yeah, it, was, it was, it was it saved dire, the game. Dire, yeah, it it right saved now, yeah. the game. You're right. It was a monumental play. I, what I don't like about this play is that the execution is easy. The timing is what makes it so good. Yeah. And kind of that, I think, makes it less of a play than like a big Earth Shatter or a big Widowmaker because there isn't really counterplay to it. It's yeah. just about the timing of it. And it's a set play that you can run over and over and over again, and there's no real punish either. So it's not it's not the same kind of risk reward. It's just you might as well go for it. Like if yeah. you're in that opportunity at any point, it just happened to pay off. And I know that sounds really shitty and like I'm trying to squash down a good play, but it doesn't get me going in the same way. And I know that Wolf was like creaming his pants about it on Twitter, but I don't know. It just doesn't get me going in the same way as like a sick Widowmaker clutch or like a, an amazing Earth Shadow. Yeah. Or something but like it that. had that same level of unexpectedness to it because I don't think anyone saw it coming no, when no, it yeah. happened. True. And it was so true. crucial. No, we did. Yeah, it was It was pretty sick. That that play is good. Okay. Yeah. It's... Oh, you got a Dragon Blade? All right, let's watch the Dragon yeah. Blade. Yeah, I remember yeah, casting this yeah. and... Uh, it was, I mean, you couldn't have asked for anything better, I think, for to cast with like your first cast, right? In a, yeah. Yeah. And, and this one play got him into your top five DPS players of the the uh, year thus yeah, far. I never forgot him. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Never All forgot it needed God, what a Legend. nasty dragon blade! All right, it's so weird that he makes Genji work as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's time for our next segment. Our next. What it's the best trash it? talk. It's trash talk time. Yeah, it's it's time for the the best trash talk of uh, of the season thus far. Um, I've gone for a weird one, but I how about you guys? We may have the same one. We got the same, we have the same one. Really? <laughs> what yep. did you guys go? What did you go? Well, yeah, what did you go for then, Josh? Everyone, Josh. Everyone has the same one above Josh. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, so me. Me, Matt, and Johnny have gone for sex big dick. <laughs> That's <laughs> not trash talk. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I, I think this was some odd version of trash talk. Yeah, this was... <laughs> I don't know, man. I was the, <laughs> no, this is the equivalent of English players just typing uh, shibal and stuff in chat. It's just it's a Korean player just typing rude words. That's all. Yeah, it is. I don't know this, <laughs> but, but, but when I think of <laughs> when I thought of trash talk, I just thought of this moment just took the community by storm because yeah. we had not seen player cams. We'd been a couple of weeks into the quarantine games, I think. Last year was like kind of new. Yeah, la last year nobody really knew who he was at this point, and he just came out with the sex big dick, and the memes <laughs> were flowing for like a week, and then he got <laughs> fined. It was just a ridiculous moment in the season. Josh is so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I just I, the topic. Like, I thought, I thought maybe mind. one person would would take this, but it just isn't trash talk. Like at its most fundamental level, <laughs> it's not trash, trash talk. talk. No. He just said sex big dick. No, because the teams are bantering going at oh, it. This is your favorite moment, Josh. Oh, yeah, this, I good. I found it hard to even remember moments where people had trash talked, but I remembered this. It st stood out in my head, which was um, it, it was. Carpe just dominating Corey on the on yeah. the uh, Torbjorn, which we had thought that Corey was a really good Torb, and then Carpe came out and just boomed him and had such a huge performance in this game, and then gets the hammer kill on him and just says, sit. It was so good. Oh, would have been better if you would have gotten the hammer kill and then se said sex big dick in the chat. That would have been better. <laughs> no, that would not have been better. That was in no way better. Well, I think, is it even in that clip? I don't know. But yeah, anyway, it, 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 was, it was that match. It's just a little bit small and it's a little, little clip. Anyway, uh, 
All right, it's time to wrap it up with our... Wait, is this our last segment? It is. It is. The last segment, Bren's Player of the Week. Roll the clip. Uh, cut. Bren's Player of the Week. Okay. <laughs> I've gone. For <laughs> You're so unenthused in that recording yeah. session. I have gone for McGravy for my player of the week this week because oh, he has been mm. doing. He's been retweeting a lot of the Black Lives Matter movement. He's been tweeting about it. He's been speaking up about it, and uh, he's been doing a couple of charity streams as well, raising money for Pride Month as well. So I yeah. think McGravy is my player of the week uh, so far, just because he's yeah he's been putting out positivity across the community. The first two time lad. That is a first two-time winner, and that is a excellent choice. Yeah, first two-time yeah. winner. Whoa, whoa, we'll play oh, it again. Playing it again. Whoa. No. Oh, no. Whoa. No. Whoa. Whoa. You never know whoa. what your of the week's going to come after you. Oh, no. Whoa. <laughs> we cool? Whoa. <laughs> Put the gremlin back in his cage, Good please. Job. Get him out. Get him out. Okay. Yeah. McGravy's just always, he's just a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, McGravy like, is just a good guy. Uh, he let me borrow his Lambo the other week. Such a nice guy. I totaled <laughs> yeah. it, but he paid for Vouch. it all. Well, you know, Vouch. I mean, unfortunately, because his name's McGravy, Jonathan can't believe in him, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because he has that name. Can't, can't believe in a player called McGravy. You guys need to have a 1v1, and the loser has to change their name. Who? Jo Johnny and McGravy? <laughs> Yeah, like you know, like uh like you put like a retirement on the line in like WWE, they should put their names on the line in a one v one. What would my what would my new name be? You just have to go by Jonathan for the rest of your Jonathan. life. Jonathan, yeah, you just have to use yeah, you your have to go game name would be Jonathan. Case, Jonathan. I thought then, you were gonna say like Smorgos board or something. Now what what year were you born? <laughs> what does that matter? Because that's the numbers at the end too. That's like yeah. a super Thing to do. So you have Jonathan, like Jonathan, 1992. Jonathan, like my YouTube channel, just Sideshow 1994. That always kills me, man. Or you can be uh, Jonathan Cass or Jonathan Gaming. Okay, Mr. Are you just throwing X. shade at me now? Well, no, I was Fuck just off, saying. Matt. Right, end, the, end the show. End the show. <laughs> Fuck Matt. 